Hello, and welcome to the penultimate episode of Power Play Season 4. Um, I say this every week, but man, this stuff goes so fast. I, I, you know, I, 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 yeah. um, so I'm Rick Bud, your Game Master, and um, these uh, four um, incredibly lovely people you see in front of you are Caitlin Bruder, our Benny Beckett, Omar Najam, our Vion Vigor, B. Zelda, our Ulez Galli, and Sam Dlev, our Cadrax Eversinger. Uh, hi, everybody. And... Um, yeah. Um, okay, I'm just gonna whip through this. Uh, as usual, I want to offer. Uh, I want to say, bleh. I know how to speak, folks. Um, sometimes my mouth works. Um, so yeah, I want to send special thanks to Jake and Lauren and the mods and everybody at Q Times. Thank you so much for doing what you do, so that we could do what we do. Uh, Y'all are awesome, and uh, folks, the internet would be a horrible, terrible, evil place without mods. Send the mods your love because they're awesome, and that's not just on this channel. It's like on any channel you watch. Like honestly, yeah, the mods make it all possible. Um, and your subs and your bits help support Q Times, and your donation to the tip jar helps support this show mm -hmm. and these people. And uh, to that end, we've got some rewards as usual, and here is how they will work. Uh, if we get to $50, the team gets a point of community determination. They have one point in the bank right now, but no individual player has any determination. So determination, as usual, going at a premium. Play those troubles against yourself, players. Um, if we get to $150, Mysterious Benefactor, as you know, in the game, our team has a Mysterious Benefactor who can send them gifts wherever they are, literally in the universe. We know outside the game that that Mysterious Benefactor is you, the chat. So far this team, you have, so far this season, you have provided the team with a portable voice stress analyzer, a one day gym pass that was good for a plus one to any physical attribute, not to exceed six, a tracer that's good at hundreds of miles, four long range earpiece comms, also good at hundreds of miles. One-time use hypno credentials, which our uh, our legally distinct off-brand version of Doctor Who's psychic paper, um, a uh, universal translation upgrades for their earpiece communicators, so as long as they're wearing them, they can always understand everyone anywhere they go, a plasium armor upgrade for Ulez Galley, and a drone and controller that work up to distance five. And uh, if we unlock the uh, benefactor gift this week, the team gets online education classes good for plus one to any mental attribute not to exceed six so everybody Aww. on the team gets one you can put it uh anywhere you want on your character sheet as long as it doesn't uh, on your mental the mental attributes as long as it doesn't exceed six yeah my tongue working great tonight folks um, my intellect is maxed out, and I do not need any more willpower. I am already ideal at conversing with other beings. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you, you rock that. <laughs> I'm sitting here with the inverse and very delighted about it. <laughs> <laughs> give me the smart. Give me the smart. Give me the smart. <laughs> no, I don't want to take the smart. I'm very happy with my three. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, yeah, you got to find a place to put it. But uh, if, if, if you can't, like, uh, if... If it unlocks, you can spend it immediately tonight. If you can't decide where you want to put it, you can spend it between this week and next week. Um, if we get to $250 as usual, our after credits lore drop a revealing glimpse of some important but previously unseen part of our story or universe. Um, Y'all have been incredibly generous with us. This season is every season, and we are super grateful. So, uh, as usual, thank you for that. Um, you can always see these tiers in chat with the command unlocks. Uh, if you can't support us by donating, you can support us by liking and commenting on YouTube videos. That theoretically helps the algorithm. Nobody really knows how YouTube works, but, you know, theoretically, yeah. So, yeah. Um, and you can share our tweets and stuff like that, which we appre to appreciate, too. And, you know, fan art and, you know, and it's like all the all the you know, little creative projects you all have done uh, just seriously melt our hearts there. Yeah. Caitlin speaks for all of us. Um, with it, you know. um, and uh, now you can get PowerPlay merchandise. There are t-shirts and stickers with Caitlin's amazing character art on it. Um, there's both the original flavor, which has our, our team looking how they did when they started out, and the updated version with lava arms and plesium bucklers and all kinds of awesome stuff like that. Um, they are available at the Two Times Teespring store. Jake's going to pump that link into chat for you. Um, the holidays are coming up. Treat yourself to a power play something because you're worth it. Um, and... Uh, the game we play here is called Icons. It is published by Ad Infinitum Adventures. It was created by a cool dude named Steve Kenson. Um, you can find him on Twitter at S. Kenson, and I assure you, he is a great follow. Uh, the book edition that I have 
is published by Green Ronin. I'm still pretty sure it's sold out, but you can get PDFs of the system or you can get, I think sometimes, print to PDF versions from Ad Infinitum themselves. Um, you can follow the show at PowerPlay RPG on Twitter and Instagram. PowerPlay is now available as a podcast for the podcast inclined. Check it out wherever fine pods are cast. Casted? Cast. Cast. Um, also, I just want to throw something out that I noticed, we noticed, you know, was happening last week. Um, sorry about the forced commercials for uh, people who aren't subbed. It's just some new crappy thing that Twitch is doing that we cannot do anything about. Um, we're, yeah, super sorry about that. It, it just, you know, it, there's just no way for us to plan around that. We don't know when it's going to happen. So that kind of blows, but, uh, thank you for bearing with us. Um, and that's the announcements time for the penultimate power play. And we are back. Um, so, previously on Power Play. Via the folks at the Alien System Tracking and Reconnaissance Organization, also known as Astro, the team went to space to try and save the Keepers, Ulez's people, from the star choir of Beta Pixidus, Cadrax's people. A few hours into their trip, they were attacked by Sonny, the son of Cadrax's mentor, Sonavel, who wanted to prevent the possibility that Cadrax's influence as Eversinger would change the star choir. They managed to survive that ambush and then continued on to Spire. In the end, the Keepers were able to escape, but Cadrax was returned to Beta Pixidus to stand trial for their actions during that battle. Cadrax gave an impassioned speech at the trial, but ultimately they were exiled from Beta Pixidus. The team was then loaded onto a ship for the month-long trip back to Earth. That trip was uneventful until they reached Earth's atmosphere, at which point a giant magical storm dragged their ship to a strange uncharted island in the South Pacific, uh, sorry, South Atlantic. Um, long story short, the mage Reese Vorton had brought the team um, there to get another crack at stealing the Compass Rose pendant that Vion got from Dr. Chander Pavagi. With some help from the castaway Cyrus King and Reese Vorton's daughter Miranda, the team ultimately defeated the mage and exposed the previously hidden island to the world. That is where we pick up. Um, so it is the morning of Sunday, August 15th, 2021. After you were rescued from Vorton Island, uh, the government of Brazil was eager to sweep the whole thing under the rug. Um, nobody was eager to tell you much about what would happen with the island, and uh, you could not find out what happened to Reese Vorton himself, whether he was taken into custody or escaped. Um, there's just no information available in that way. Um, early the following morning, Cyrus King was put onto a ship that would take him home, and they put you on a plane to Port Ruby. You are on that plane right now. It's quiet. There's a nice selection of movies. Is there is anything is there anything you would like to do or talk about or deal with while you are on this plane? Trip is about I think 8 hours. Is this tell me about this plane. Are we like on a commercial flight from uh Sao Paulo to Port Ruby International? What? Absolutely. Uh, so, Ula, have you ever been on a plane? Because Cadrax has uh -uh. never been on a plane. We've seen planes. We've sabotaged planes. Yep, yep. <laughs> seen them definitely from the outside. Mm -hmm. um, but the inside is very weird. There are people offering us peanuts and headphones and tiny packages. Ah, there's so many magazines. So many buttons to press. I have downloaded every movie aboard this plane. <laughs> I am discovering that they are not built for people of my height. I am uncomfortable. 
Poor Ula is just going to get the crappy edited for plain versions of everything. But okay, yeah. <laughs> what is the worst possible thing you could be seeing edited for plain? It is playing now. Uh-uh. <laughs> it's like a bad Christmas movie. Like, you know, Die Hard, oh. but like edited for plain. <laughs> All the violence It's is a 30 out. minute movie. Yes, yeah. <laughs> good, good. Just dialogue. Yippee Kaye, you traveler. <laughs> <laughs> It's just Yippie Kaye, and then it goes blank. Oh, yeah. wow. Wow, wow, wow. Yippie Kaye, yeah. mother. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I think we have unlocked the first tier. Um, so thank you so much, everybody. You now have Yippie an extra Kaye, point mother. of community determination. Yippie Kaye, mother. Mm, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Yippie Kaye, mother. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's more or less been Ulez's experience thus far. Um, do we have to keep them seated? Like, do they want to get up and walk oof. around all the time? Of course. Oh, I love What's that. What's the point of staying seated? We've all been aboard <laughs> spacecrafts, which you don't have to be seated unless we are going through a wormhole or traveling at light speed. This is so slow, this plane. And you want us to sit down for what purpose? Why? Why are you ordering us around? What is your What is your designation? <laughs> Why do you give us commands? You are not the you are not the pilot. And the flight uh, attendant is... is just like, you know, listen, do you want the chicken or the fish? That's all I'm trying to find out. Please. No. No, but where is your pilot? And may we speak with them? We have many questions. The pilot is in the cockpit, and um you can maybe greet the pilot after the plane has landed. Um, but that's up to the pilot. You cannot speak with the pilot in flight. We would like to offer our assistance. We could help land this plane. We would love to learn about the mechanics. We can absorb all of the information rather speedily. Oh no! Um, don't 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 you worry. Um, uh, captain Bert has everything well under control. Oh, they are a captain. Now we must meet them. Um, that's not going to be. Um, can I get you a drink, maybe? Uh, Vion's gonna pop up really quickly. Uh, uh, you know, I, I, you know uh, hi, how, how's it going? My, my name's Vion. What's your name again? Um, my name is uh, Natalie. Natalie, it's so nice to meet you. Uh, what my friend here is actually kind of asking for is, you know, those little wings that you get, uh, the little pin with the little wings oh, that you get yeah. sometimes when you're like, you know, you want. I mean, you want to meet the captain. You can do it like before, or after. Um, but you know, obviously, we're kind of in a rush. But really, what we want is the the wings. Isn't that right, Ulaz? Uh yes 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 well we, we we typically keep these uh for you know children but um uh, uh if uh, yeah i'm here to i i will see if i can scrape up a, a pair of um, uh, wings and um i i I'll, I'll bring them right over to your seats um if Thank you, you take your seats we will natalie if you can make an exception for us i would be greatly appreciative thank you and I'm going to say oh, there's a little you. something going on with Vion because it's been months since he's had a freaking coffee that oh wasn't a spaceship coffee. So when we stopped, uh, is it, did you say, it, Sao Paulo is where we stopped? Is that correct? Mm-hmm. Sure. So Vion got to go to Isai Cafe uh, and got to, ju- and had like 70, like made up for lost time. And it's not a thing, and this is me playing on top of my intelligence, it's not a thing where, like, more coffee means, like, oh my gosh, I'm firing off. It's, like, the most calming thing. When you have depression, like, caffeine, like, really helps with that. So, Vion is just, like, cruising. <laughs> that's that's his energy right now, just so everyone knows. Yeah, and, and Natalie can kind of sense that on you, so she's like, thank you, sir. Now, if you could just, just take your seat. And, um, oh, we're sitting. Uh, Don't worry about it, Natalie. Thank you so much. We will definitely sit. Don't even worry about that. All right, let's, let's go. Yeah, let's go. Uh, let's, do you want to see the, do you want the window seat? Oh, yes. Great. We would like to press our face against and observe outdoors. Okay. Just let me know if you see a gremlin. <laughs> oh, we will. And we, we take a seat. All right. <laughs> uh, Benny, Cadrax, what are you up to? Benny. Um, Mostly just, I'm trying to decide if Benny's afraid of flying or not. <laughs> I think it would be funny. <laughs> Oh my god, um, you are in space. <laughs> yeah, but that's not an airplane. That's highly advanced alien technology, uh, which she was also scared about, by the way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um I don't think I don't know if Benny has flown more than once in her life. I think she maybe she got I think, I think she drove the first time 
I think she drove from Michigan to to New York to Port Ruby. And that like here, the moms moved her to Port Ruby. And then I think when she visited a few months ago, she flew. I think that was Benny's first time on a plane. Because when you spontaneously combust and you don't really have control over that, I don't think uh, your parents are going to take you on an airplane. Um, that seems reasonable. Yeah. So I think that there's <laughs> Oxygen like... Oxygen and stuff, yeah. Yeah, right. So I think there is like a little bit of like, this is like the third time I've done this. And uh, there's a lot of people here. Like being being on a spaceship with like my friends... I can be scared and freak out and it'll be fine. Here, there are lots of people on this giant international flight. Um, and I think she is like oscillating wildly between being proud that she is more in control of her powers in a way that this isn't a dangerous experience necessarily. And also being like, oh God, turbulence. Oh Jesus. Like one second away from asking uh, Beyond to cast nullification on her, like at all times, I think just wildly oscillating, but she's just hanging out and eating. It's probably on her like fourth bag of peanuts. And that's where I'm at. <laughs> Cadrax? Benny? child behind me is kicking my chair oh did you want to say hi no i would like them to stop kicking my chair it is uncomfortable oh hold on um benny's gonna kind of like you know there's like the little gap between the seats she's gonna like peek back and be like hey hey buddy hi i'm benny what you up to and the kid just stares back at you and then she's like This did okay. not desist the behavior. No, it didn't. Um, hey, do you like magic tricks? No. Give me do a you... dollar. I've been in space for four months, so I don't have any dollars. Um, All right. Start kicking the back of the chair again. <laughs> Vian kind of leans over. Do you want me to? Do you want me to? I, I can cast sleep on the child. Really funny, but um, while I would be extremely grateful, that does seem like a minor ethical violation. Yeah, all right, cool. Vian yeah. puts sunglasses on and just goes back to just like listening right. to music. <laughs> I lean over to Benny, yeah, but it might be worth it though. <laughs> just kicked again, like that. <laughs> uh, how many hours have? I want a dollar. I want a dollar. Silence. <laughs> um, I won't even make you roll for that. Yeah, <laughs> suddenly it's like yeah, the, the your 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 complex task power creates kind of a cone of silence over the child who is just sort of does not realize that no one can hear her anymore, yeah. but is still singing her "I Want a Dollar" song. Yeah. Kicking the back of your seat. Benny would like to spend like an inordinate amount of time with an airline napkin and a ballpoint pen drawing her best approximation of a dollar without having seen one in several months. Um, and like maybe gives George Washington like a little top hat or something. And it's not going to look realistic in any way, but it's just going to be something that looks goofy <laughs> and Give will maybe amuse. Role. Oh, God. Okay. Oh, we now know what an art role is. Yeah. Dexterity. It is. It, it, it's a close call there between coordination and intellect, but I think for for drawing, that feels like a coordinated okay. skill. That's a good role. That is, that's a nine. Okay. You managed to produce a, you know, fairly amusing looking, you know, N napkin dollar. dollar bill. Yeah, napkin yeah. dollar. Okay. Yeah, it's not supposed to pass as a real uh, in any sense, but um, Benny's gonna like, good. like, <laughs> yeah, I know, like, it's like look back in and be like, hey, hey, kid, <laughs> and 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 she looks up and she's like, yeah, that's great, and I'm gonna slide it through, <laughs> slide this. Yeah, you can't napkin. hear her because of the cone of silence, but she mm -hmm. kind of oh, reaches no, yes. over and takes the dollar, and then she's just like, you see her eyes kind of like widen, and she she sort of seems pretty impressed by this. And she like settles back into her seat and stops kicking Kadrax's chair. I was told we were not allowed to manufacture our own currency. Desperate times, desperate measures, you know what they say. Um, 
Well, I'm surprised that worked, but hopefully they leave you alone. Thank you. And, uh, yeah. It, I think you know, uh, Cadrax is going to continue pestering Benny with minor oh, yes. problems. I think that is what they are doing. Yes, oh, 100%. Because there's the tension, yeah. and then there is the distract. Yes, oh, And fully. that is Cadrax's yeah. support mechanism. If you focus on my minor inconveniences, you mm -hmm. won't think about the fact that you will explode into flame. Yes, yeah, yeah. Cat, it's very Cadrax. much just... Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I was like, just Benny, Benny being given a task. And mm -hmm. she's like, yes, task. I will take and I will do well. Thank you. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, like, oh, I want to try to solve the, the crossword together. Yes. Oh, my God. Because yeah. I am not prepared. In the magazine. Everything is culture. Yeah. It's one of those crosswords where the answers are all like aviation related. You know? Oh, my God. It's, it's... And half of them are filled in in pen. Yeah. 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 Wrong. Oh my god, Caitlin is gonna me. cry because that's what me and my real life sisters do whenever we get together is we do oh single crossword together and we get really frustrated by you it. So this is all the airplane crossword together in pen and leave it for someone? You are a monster. They're welcome. Um I, <laughs> can I then add also uh uh Ulez and Vion are like I mean I assume we're sitting next to each other, right? You're by the yeah. window and uh, and so I find one of the movies that we watched like a bunch. I don't know what it would be, but it's one that definitely has to be cut. And I kind of lean yep. over and go, uh, do you want to split the headphones and watch this? And we just like loudly scoff anytime they've made an edit to make it like airplane safe. Scoff. Yeah. yeah just like, ugh. 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 They cut that out. Ugh. 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 Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and so this for would two be a great hours. This of our time. Yeah. We're just going to scoff mm. every time that they make an unnecessary, <sighs> like, ugh. Yeah. It's it's the crab that fought Hercules airline edit. Yes! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's some stuff that you cannot show on the airplane for that movie. Oh, uh, the Christmas film. <laughs> um, yeah. And so there's just two hours of a scoffing. <laughs> <laughs> and you get to drink your good, good coffee. Uh, not on the plane, unfortunately. Oh, you can't take liquids up. Yep. 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 Yeah. I don't travel I well but you leave. could take coffee and you could have water and the water could be warm and i don't understand why this is not adequate uh <laughs> turn behind to turns. face you <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i, I think, think we're probably sitting like you know we're we're on a, opposite sides of the aisle i like that okay is it, is it where ulas actually pulls me away from even starting that conversation where it's just like oh no no <laughs> <laughs> this is not worth it we have seen what happens when this conversation goes rogue but I don't understand. Benny, I don't understand. It's, it's a thing about timing, Kedrix. The whole thing is about chemistry and timing, so that's the actual important part of it. And a huge Oh, look, I'm portion. scoffing. Mm -hmm. huh. uh, uh, they cut that? Ugh. Wow. Ugh. <laughs> and that's for hours. <laughs> yes! I've never I, been happier. I, I love it. Um, <laughs> and yeah, the whole trip takes about eight hours. And... Um, <laughs> Eventually, you uh, come to land in Devere International Airport in the Edmond neighborhood of Baronsdale. Jake, do you want to put up the uh, Port Ruby full city map just for a couple, couple of seconds oh. there, just to, for all time's sake? Um, yeah, there we go. Back in Port Ruby. Um, and uh, you exit the plane. Um, and, uh, you know, you make your way through the terminal and, uh, eventually, you know, you, you, you get the little bit of baggage that you still had. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, you're, yes, Sam? How is the Lorgen doing when we get out of cargo? Cause I assume we did not fly with an emotional support Lorgen. I assume mm -hmm. they went in the hold. How is what? the Lorgen when we um, retrieve it? Um, <laughs> Actually, actually, oh, I don't know if we have to burn a point of determination for this because I I don't know how I personally feel about like storing animal. Maybe it's just because I've watched Con Air that I just feel weird about that <laughs> space. Um, but uh, I can shrink <laughs> creatures, so it could be a little pocket lorgen oh! that we just had on the plane. Did little we crumbs. fly with pocket lorgen and we never subjected the child behind my seat to it? <laughs> Well, we wanted the child to live, so we had to make a choice, I think. We did? You made a good choice. Well, <laughs> Benny made the good choice. <laughs> I would never to hold no resentment yeah. of you. 
coffee squire. I, I, I will, if you want to have a mini lord in that Vion uh, shrank down, um, I will not make you spend determination on that. Um, it's an actual Pokemon. It is a Poke. <laughs> it is a Mon. It's a Pokemon. Um, so, yeah. And uh, as, as you come out of baggage claim, um, you find Agent Henry Park waiting for you outside the terminal. Hey! Ah, we greet you. What is we that greet for store you, eyes? Liz? Yeah, our, our sources in Brazil tipped us off that you were coming. Um, Lila and the boys from Astro want a debriefing. Uh, come on, I brought a van. I'll give you a ride. Oh, a debriefing? Yeah, a debriefing. Okay, um, yeah, that seems fine. We trust you. So he, he takes you, uh, you know, to the, you know, short-term parking, and uh, you, you pile into the van. Uh, Jake, can I have the Baronsdale map for... Oh, um... Oh, she's doing good. She's she's been uh, you know getting in a lot of practice at the whole wall crawling thing. You know she couldn't really do that uh, too much when she was in that end uh, prison, but now it's like she's crawling up and down building sides, bridges. I mean it, it, it it's pretty cool. She's she's really getting into it. You know it's like really embracing her power. It's it's, it's, it's kind of a beautiful thing. You must be very proud. Is that a professional occupation, crawling on walls? Um. Well. Uh, I mean, there are probably professional applications, you know, acrobat, um, window washer. Putting up um, billboards. What? Putting up billboards. Putting up billboards. Yeah, yeah. These are all uh, very important functions, none of which she is performing. She's still, you know, mostly living in my living room. But, um, uh, but yeah. yeah, no, she's doing great. I, I'll tell her you asked about her. Thank you. And uh, he drives you over to the Conover Airport Hotel, coincidentally the same hotel at which you once uh, you first um, encountered Reese Vorton, which is uh, also in Edmond, just right outside the airport there. Uh, you can see the Beer International Airport, Edmond, right under Baronsdale uh, on the map. And um, he parks the car and leads you to a conference room where you find Lila Pendry, played by Meryl Streep, Dr. Keith Sutton, played by Elliot Page, and Dr. Irvin Mosley, played by William Jackson Harper, all kind of waiting for you uh, sitting around this conference table. And uh, as you walk in, Lila says, welcome back to port. And before she can finish, Dr. Mosley jumps out of his seat. What went wrong in the wormhole? What, what happened on Spire? Were you able to make contact with the Keepers? Did the Star Choir invasion succeed? Where have you been all this time? How did you wind up in Brazil? And, and did you bring me back anything like a souvenir? Oh, we did. Um, uh, Ulez and I actually got you something specific. Oh, uh, Natalie brought us, um, like, uh, if it's the wings, you also sometimes get, like, socks and just, like, miscellaneous branded content. Uh, it's an eight-hour flight, so it would be um, a little mini toothbrush, oh a my God. tiny yes. thing of toothpaste, a flight mask, things that purport to be socks but are not. Yes. And um, the, most, the most horrible set of wet earbuds wet. you've ever put in your, yep. in your head. <laughs> so you give him, like, all your, like, airline refuse? Um, yeah, we yeah. thought, you know, uh, travel... Uh, was sort of the theme of this gift and so uh, you know we were traveling you helped us travel this so should help you travel on your next travel so there and, and you, you can go. see Lila just kind of rolling her eyes and just shaking her head and she's like okay okay um <laughs> so what happened out there team oh boy where to start um oh, indeed I mean we could perhaps start with being attacked in the wormhole and being knocked off of course because that is truly the beginning of our journey where everything started to collapse and the plan was no longer upheld. Yeah. Attacked by who? Uh we are not at liberty to disclose that information. We are not? Hmm. Oh, I don't know. It is not uh, for me to disclose. And, and it's not for me to disclose. We have never spoken about this individual with anyone but you, Cadrax. Well, if he returns, they should be prepared. Ah. Would you like to describe the individual and his actions? Are you aware of this man in the course of your work? And a uh, picture of Sonny. Okay. I feel um, I feel like at some point such a thing may have happened. Sure, um, I'll, I'll I'll say you you took a selfie with Sonnevel's son when before you realized 
maybe quite how awful he was. Oh, I'm sure um, Abigail took a picture. To be like, mm. anyway, no, don't need to worry about yeah. that. Don't ever need to think about him again. Yep. And uh, she kind of looks at the picture and doesn't look familiar. Do you have a name? I can run it through our systems. Unless your system catalogs other members of the Star Choir, you would not be there. Their systems are inadequate. They would not have that information. They did seem to catalog many alien beings and then put them in prison, so I don't want to... Not you specifically. I understand that you are opposed to this very notion. But nonetheless, it bespeaks the capacity of their reconnaissance and database usage. Yeah. Anyway, he is extremely dangerous. And ambushed us. Inside of the wormhole. Correct. It was terrifying. We have never truly had to navigate that kind of piloting in a wormhole, but we were pretty successful. Um, although the ship did fall off of a cliff and then it crashed and potentially explode. The cliff was so far down. Mm, and, and you see Dr. Like, Mosley's just like, it exploded? Well. <laughs> oh. I, yes. Oh, baby. Once it hit the bottom of the canyon after the gravity manipulation spell wore off. Dr. Sutton's just, he's very attached to the ship. Oh, Not yeah. far. We don't even know where in space that particular planet is. No. <sighs> it wasn't cataloged with any of my people. No. Could be anywhere in the universe, in fact. Correct. It was a terrifying planet that we do not wish to revisit. However, no. our powers were quite useful against it, and we are quite content when light is what is strong. Mindless. And that is when we fought him. Yeah, oh yes. He should still be there. But he did not seem concerned, and that, in turn, concerns me. What happened on Spire? Well, we were not really successful. Many of my people had to perish at uh, the hands of our assailants. And, well, we regret to inform you that we were not able to salvage all the data from my homeworld. And it has fallen into the hands of the Star Choir. So many of the Keepers lost their lives, but many more were saved. We grabbed parts of them, and we will integrate them as we once had before, but the planet is no more. And I understand that a planet is not what makes a people. It is the people themselves. So we are trying to focus on those who survived while still mourning the loss. And Miles. Well, none of that sounds particularly good. Hopefully the Keepers will make contact again with us in the future, but I suppose that's on, only a possibility because of you, so thank you, team. Oh, that is not all. Oh, ha. Well, There's had... more. Oh, well, of course. Uh, Cadrex, would you care to share your chapter of events? Oh, yes. In efforts to stop my people from callously and unnecessarily invading another species without utilizing any diplomatic channels whatsoever to achieve their ends. And in fact, acting beyond the moral bounds of any redemption, we attempted to stop them and therefore I was considered traitorous and was put on trial. I'm exiled now. Hello. Uh, I suppose I ought to seek asylum. Oh. May I have asylum, please? And Lila's, I think I can probably arrange that. And she scribbles on a pad. Um, oh, and also this in. one, Mini Lorgen. Oh, yes. So their name also is also seeking asylum. Sorry, let me She's go like, ahead. I'll return no, size. It's adorable. <laughs> Wait, what's its real size? Did you do it? Uh, like, uh, oh, yeah. it's. Still kind of adorable. Uh, and this one, and I'm gonna cast image. <laughs> and I wanna I wanna make the big one. <laughs> <laughs> the large in. Yeah. Um Troll. Yeah, okay. Um I'll I'll give that to you. You make the large in and um she's just sort of like where did that come from? And she looks at Uvion and she's like, Where did that come from? You got me. <laughs> you got me. 
Yeah, you got me. And I wave my hand and it gets a top hat. I'm sorry. I'll stop. I'll stop. She I promise. Scribbles on a page. You're getting predictable, magician. I wave my hand again. It gets a mustache. I'm sorry. It'll go away. I don't know what happened. I'm trying so hard. I'm just, it's just so, it's honestly, it's so good to be home. And well, unfortunately, I have some bad news of my own. Oh, please share your reports. Can you debrief us on what has occurred in our absence? Yeah, it's been a while. We, we, like inter we intercepted an underworld communique that suggests the cluster might be after the four of you. You should consider oh. yourselves in danger, but the cluster might try other ways of getting to you, so you should probably consider your friends and family in danger as well. Um, I've had agents watching your parents in Bellwood from afar, Benny. Um, so far, everything is quiet there. Cadrax, I've also put eyes on Abigail Fripp. Everything seems fine, but we've only been watching since yesterday. It could all turn out to be nothing. But is, keep your eyes peeled. Is my assistant well? Has somebody checked in on her? We have sent many photos and updates, mostly photos of photos that Benny took, but we have not received a reply. Um, and 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 Lyle's like, I would like to say I don't think Benny has showed or shared any photos she's taken. Not on the camera or on your yeah. Okay, then Ulis took pictures of your camera, but it was off the whole time, thinking that that was going to transfer all the data inside. Lila's, you know, it, it's unlikely any transmissions you sent from Spire or Beta Pixidus could have reached us. Um, but uh, no, I haven't checked in on your assistant. Um, oh. Well, I'll text her now. Do you text her? Yeah. What do you say? Like a selfie of whoever Ulas is sitting next to. And, uh, yeah, um, <laughs> you know, and, um, Marilyn is just, you know, responds, uh, are you back? Uh, and they just get like, oh, we greet you. We have returned. And, and you kind of get like a smiley face. Perfect. All right. Okay. My assistant is most likely well for they have responded to my texting communications. And, um, Lila's like, if we learn anything new. We'll update you immediately. And then Henry Park goes, anybody need a ride home? Uh, uh, yeah, actually. Yeah. Do we? How far are we from um, where we live, Rick? I mean, you are um, sort of in, you know, east uh central baronsdale you know you would have to kind of cut all the way up and across so like by car you know you're probably talking you know 30 40 minutes more you know maybe a little more depending on traffic it's sunday night so probably not heavy traffic so yeah 30 or 40 minutes away uh oh you want to just teleport on the way back and yes. take the scenic route we miss teleporting in port ruby yeah we're good thank you so much we appreciate that but we're gonna teleport our way back cadrax benny <laughs> Uh, yeah, please. I think. Perhaps you might get a ride to the port near Astra. I believe that is where we left our van. Yes, that's true. Can you take me to my van, please? Oh, right. Yeah, of course. Of course. Um, and, uh, yeah, he will take you, uh, to the boardwalk in Fort Tremble. Um, Kadrax, are you going with, uh, them or are you going your own way? I want to. It's been like two months since I've seen dog. No. I want to get there. Like as I'm, I'm being so social right now, uh, but I do want to make sure. Uh, I, I, I go up to Ulez. Which one of us will be responsible first? And I look to Lori, and I look back. Oh. Hmm. Would you be okay if we took Lori first? since it would be prudent for you to spend as much quality time with Dog, and then we can slowly introduce the two of them. Exactly. I, it is good to acclimate to a new planet's atmosphere before one also acclimates to multiple new species. This is true. Okay, Laurie, time to go in my helmet. What do they eat? Ah, uh, 
Codex. We have mostly found Lori, just whatever we find. <laughs> well, s certainly their diet is optimized for Pixidian food. So uh, I do not know what Terran things Lori might appreciate. I encourage you to experiment, but you may chemically analyze, perhaps, uh, our wildflowers and see if there is oh. something nutritionally compatible among Earth's botany. Uh, this is very exciting. Uh, Pixidian food, uh, that isn't but like that, I'm so sorry if this is like a problematic question, Cadrax. But like, is that in, in what way is that comparable to like Terran food, or is it like sound? Oh, well, the Star Choir are not ourselves local to Pixidus, whereas right. the Lorgen are. Right, right, right. So that which would be seemingly compatible with voices in the choir yeah it's not directly pertinent. the indigenous species yeah uh we are yeah, invasive okay. yeah it is an ongoing theme right <laughs> uh okay well yeah i guess we'll just uh, figure it out as we go please do we report like if error. i take oh, yes. custody <laughs> we will keep a very detailed log and report of everything they consume and everything that is well we'll see what works and what doesn't work we are prepared for the worst yeah. And they like hold the Lord Jin out again like a baby by the armpits and kind of wiggle its little legs. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna it's have some funny fun every out. time. <laughs> and oh. as they're getting ready to teleport and leave, I'm like, and under no circumstance it pop. <laughs> <laughs> we we appear like on a rooftop, just like wait. <laughs> <laughs> Benny Benny's back there with you going, they'll figure it out. <laughs> right i'm sure that's um, the case and i will take off before i see where yeah. i popped in uh i get my ride to the van and before we left i believe benny said that she had packed up her apartment because that building was not livable the two months well, ago that what so, i'm saying is yeah, i was, well, I was okay. gonna say because i think she would have if like she couldn't even be there to like be during like if there's any renovations happening so i don't know i feel like she might have like moved boxes of stuff into like sandy's uh like a storage unit or something during that time okay. like, because she had spent that day like packing up her apartment before they left because she was freaked out so i think benny's gonna they drop her off with the van she's gonna go to the storage unit get some clothes and then go sleep on the couch in the office yeah and and <laughs> you can do that and when you get to the office i'll say um your cell phone has finally kind of caught up with where you are and reconnected and uh you've got uh, a voicemail Oh, I have to be a person on Earth again. Let's look at that. Yeah, it is uh, Dino Mank. Oh, um, good. And uh, you play the voicemail and he's, yo, yo, what up, Benny? Uh, it is July 16th. Not sure when you're back in town, but uh, you will be happy to hear that my uncle's brother-in-law is hard at work fixing that hole in your wall. He is a friggin' genius, so it shouldn't take more than two weeks. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's about it. Oh, actually, there was some dude, uh, asking about you at the office last night. He kind of looked like a cop or a fed or something, but he wouldn't give me his name, so I pretended not to know you. Uh, oh, but watch your back. Give me a call. I'll tell you all about it. All right. Later. And you hang up. Uh, to the voicemail, she says, thanks, Dino. <laughs> okay. Um... And I've also been informed by Drac that Benny has dozens of messages from Will, so um, <laughs> she'll deal with later. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It's just like over and over again. Mm -hmm. He's just like, you know, hey, checking on you again. Hey, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, well, I think she's going to message the group chat and let them know that apparently someone was looking for her at work. All right. Uh, and basically give Dino the description that Dino gave. Which is very, very, very little, but you know. Are you are you uh, calling him so he can tell you about it, or? Oh man, man, she's so tired. But this, is, we've just been you, informed that our lives to... might be at risk. No, I think I think she does. I think she's like she was wanting to go back and like just like sleep for twenty four hours. Long flights are exhausting, no matter what, and also mm. the months of space travel so i think she's like oh, i have to deal with this right now so she, i think she takes like 10 minutes to like be petulant 
and like whiny about it that she has to do tasks and have responsibilities and then she calls Dina back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you you know, it's it's night. Yeah, I'll say at this point. In fact, why don't we uh, oh, change up our background? Yeah, by the time you got out of that meeting with Lila, it was getting dark and now it is fully dark. Uh, and you, you just you just get his voicemail. Yo, 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 it's Dino. Leave a message, baby. Uh, she's gonna hang up, uh, and then she's gonna text him and be like, <laughs> um, I, not even, not even greeting. I think she's just gonna text him and be like, um, can you describe exactly the dude who came looking for me? Thank you. Have a good night. And then that's the whole message. All right. And then and, she's gonna uh, send a follow-up and say, tell your cousin thanks. <laughs> or friend. Was it cousin? Was it? Cousin? Uh, it is actually his, um, his uncle's uncle. brother-in-law. Uncle's brother. Yeah. That's right. Yes. So tell. Yeah. Yes. That, thank you. Yeah. Um, and then she so, sleeps. Yeah. For a long and then time. she what? Uh, sleeps for a long time. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and uh, right about the time y'all are getting that information from Benny that she uh, conveyed to you what Dino said. Um, and um, Cadrax, you are arriving home to find Abigail, played by Kristen Bell um sitting on the couch uh you know watching tv and she is here's the key turning the door and she kind of <gasps> jumps up and then sees you and she's just like ah! and she kind of comes running over and just gives you a hug she's like you're home you're home you're home you're home you're home you're home, you're home. and and dog just, who is laying on the couch just like bounces off the couch and starts doing zoomies and circles like all around the apartment i'm so glad to be back huh we're so glad to have you back. Isn't that right, dog? And dog is just is running around the living room in circles, at, you know, super high speed. Thank you for watching them. Oh, I... oh, my pleasure. Um, you know, you know, me and dog, we we get along just fine. I... Yeah, and dog barks in, in a scent. <laughs> it's production values, folks. I trust they were a good dog. Oh yeah, dog is great. Been you know, been 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 my guardian angel. Love his little puppy. And scratches behind his ears. And dog. Oh, I'll get down on my knees and just let dog paws up onto my shoulders. And... Yeah. Dog just like kind of tackles you, just like trying to lick your face and just like I just aggressively hug you and lick you. At the I same would time. never and... permit this. Typically, I would I would enforce strong boundaries uh, with members of this alien species. And yet I do find myself disinclined to enforce such on this yeah. day. And yeah, you know, and uh, I don't know, unless there's anything else you need to do at home. Um, Vion, I hug Ulez. dog. Yeah, you just hug dog. Um, and Vion and Ulez, you finally teleport your way uh, back home. Um, you make it into the apartment. Uh, and um, just you're, you're in there for like 10 seconds when there's a knock on the door. Uh, can I say that we already within the 10 seconds already have our like apartment robes on? We have matching like floral robes. Hundred <laughs> percent. Yes. Uh, we just put the robes on. All right. <laughs> oh, and, I wonder if that is Sandy. Yeah, let's go find out. I answer the door. And yeah, in fact, it is Sandy. He's got hey. like, a plate of food with him and he's just like, hey, welcome back. I brought homemade empanadas. Uh, not from my <laughs> home. Uh, Mrs. Flores oh. on the third floor made them. They're too salty for me, but I thought you might like them. Ban oh, music to my ears. Thank you so much. You want to come in, Sandy? Yeah, yeah. And he, and he walks in and looks around. He's like, been keeping an eye on stuff. Where y'all yeah, been? Yeah. How, how was your trip? You watered all of our plants. Oh, they are doing quite well. Thank you. Yeah, I, I've been keeping an eye on the plants. Um, you, you might want to, you know, uh, uh, keep an eye on those begonias there. I, I saw some crusting around the leaves, but um, everything nice. seems generally healthy. Nice. And you talk to them? Um, well, I practice my singing when I'm watering them. It's, it's similar. Oh, good. Oh, wow. Yeah, well, I was thinking they were looking better than usual. So that's that, yeah, that's something else, Sandy. Good job. Yeah, all the classics. Toto, Air Supply. I, you know, I just... Yes. I, uh -huh. Go right, go right through all my faves. Um, so, okay. so where you been? Uh, uh visiting my your hometown. Home. Yeah, your hometown isn't. Look, that... we got some grass from there, and Ulez will pull out the. <laughs> I think it was like purple grass. Yeah. Um, 
And uh, he looks, he's like, whoa. That's we are going to... freaky. I've never That's... seen grass in purple before. Oh, I mean, unless here. it was like painted for a football game or something. What? No. No, no, no football. Here's a blade of grass. You may press it in a book. Oh, and he takes it. He's like, "That's great. Thank you so much." You know, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna bother you. I'm gonna let y'all relax. I'm sure you've had a long trip. I just wanted to, you know, welcome you home. Somebody should oh, always have someone you. to welcome, welcome them. Oh, from. indeed. Oh. Uh, did anybody by a chance come looking for us? Huh. Well, it's funny now that you mention it. A couple of weeks ago, uh, there was some lady here looking for you i, I caught cool. her standing in front of the door like kind of playing with the knob like she wasn't trying to pick it or anything but she had this strange vibe you know very suspicious uh she, she said she was waiting for you and when i told her you weren't around i'd be happy to give you a message she kind of snarled at me and took off uh i would have tried to stop her but um i haven't had much luck getting in front of people looking for you in the past so i, I kind of yeah just her, no you don't that's that's you don't have to do that, Sandy. Uh, how, how long ago was this? Oh, I don't know. The, at least a couple of weeks, maybe you know, back in mid July. Oh boy. Uh, I am with Sandy there. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna try to post cog the doorknob. Oh, um, you want to post cog the doorknob? Okay, give me a post cog roll. Okay. Here we go. I know this is a couple weeks ago, so let's see what we can do here. Host cog level four rolling. That is going to be a total of seven. Okay. One does one's best. <laughs> that's that's. I mean, you're only going back a month, so I'm going to call that 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 is a major success. Um, and are you broadcasting this to Sandy too, or yeah. just to Liz? Yeah. Okay. So you know you get that Vion kind of dream state thing going on, and do you see a woman? Um, uh, if I had to cast her, I'd say she's a Saoirse Ronan, um, and she is dressed in a black trench coat, um, and uh, she has a phone at her ear, and she is saying, "They're not here. You want me to look around inside?" And then she puts her hand on the knob, and she's listening to whatever's coming through that phone, um, and then she hears. Hey, can I help you? And she turns her head to see Sandy standing at the end of the hallway, and that's where the vision ends. Huh. We are not familiar with that individual. And Sandy's yeah. like, oh, that's so weird when you do that. Ooh. Yeah, trust me. It's strange for me, too. Oh, we are quite fond of it. It is an incredibly useful tool, plus we love visual animations. All visual representations of the past. It's quite nice. Thank you very much, Ulez. It's nice of you to say. Oh, you're welcome. Um, okay. Well, if she comes by again, uh, Sandy, you know, just let us know, and, and you absolutely do not have to intervene or do anything or get involved. We'll totally take care of it. I'm sure. Yeah, you got there. it. You got it. Uh, and he's, nighty night, and he takes oh. her off and closes the door behind him. These are and lovely it... empanadas. Ulez is like breaking them apart, looking at all the insides, like, oh, what's that? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's not huh. making me hungry. Um, <laughs> we could, yeah, we could cook up some chimichurri sauce or something like that too. <laughs> oh, that so, would be wonderful <laughs> with our no groceries. <laughs> anything else you want to do before you, you know, settle in for the night? Make a little pet area. Yeah, for Lori. Yeah. Oh, Lori, right. You have Lori. Yeah. And Lori just kind of, you know, gets out and just kind of starts hopping around the apartment, sniffing stuff, goes over to the plants and like sort of like, jump, 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 starts like taking bites out of all the leaves of the plants. Oh. oh. And, then, wow. and, then, and then after he's taking some random bites, Lori kind of like runs and bounces up to like the kitchen counter and starts like taking bites out of the empanadas. Huh. Okay, well, empanadas is on the menu. That's good to know. This is the right we city for it. We will add this to our list. We've analyzed yeah. all of the ingredients, and we can figure out if this is good for Lori or not. Yeah, it's just okay. like throwing empanadas into its unhinged jaw. Like, <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, this huh. is going to cost us a lot of money. Um, or this might be a good chance to use leftovers, like from like cafes and stuff at the end of the day when they have to like, you know, they have to literally oh. throw stuff out because they, you know. A a Disposal certain... Lord. <laughs> I just picture us going behind a cafe at the end of the night and like tossing them in the garbage bin. 
yeah. and they just clean up shop. Yeah. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Yeah, it doesn't solve any hunger problems, but at least no. the food's not going away. It solves worries. It solves yeah. worries, hunger problems. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and then ultimately, I think like we find a cardboard box or like a tin or something, and we stuff it the top with like a pillow, but puncture a hole in it. Because oh. I remember like the Lori like bur buried down, so this is like mm. a little, and we'll put like some like cotton or something at the bottom, so that like that, that, that's a little area that they can go hide in. Yeah. Plus some of the leaves they took a bite out of Ulez will break off the leaves at the stem and like sprinkle it in the little box. Oh, and uh, yeah, Lori uh, starts to drift off to peaceful Lorge and sleep. Oh, thank God. <gasps> and uh, yeah, um... slowly, slowly, I am no, I am no longer outnumbered. Me and Dog and Lorge and all sleep. Take that. Yes! <laughs> <Not sleepers>. oh. <laughs> yeah. Hey, half and half now. Um, but. Those who don't sleep may take advantage of it, which is why after Abigail and Dog are asleep, um, there will be a knock on Vion's fire escape window. Uh, that definitely scares the hell out of Vion at first. <laughs> <laughs> and, until Vion turns and sees as you uh, and gets up. And oh. opens the window. Hey, Liz, we got company. Oh, brilliant. I hold up a water bottle and a mug um, that says Serrano Memorial Hospital on it. Okay. Are you Clearly here for... I need to learn your protocols. <gasps> I'm Coffee. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Hold on. Hold on, Doc. Are you saying you want to make some coffee tonight? Well, if I'm going to be on this planet uh -huh. for a while, uh -huh. clearly I should learn your ways, even if they do not seem immediately rational to me. Oh, they are very fun, though. The procedure is so strict. We oh. really like it. I've been waiting for this moment. In fact, and Vion goes into his room and comes back out with a ma third matching robe. Come on in, Doc. <laughs> I just now. float in. <laughs> this is for you. Go ahead. It's a very thin. It's not going to keep you that. It's it's the summer, so you know we're already pretty warm. That's just. It's mostly just for comfort and look. Just right over my clothes. Mm -hmm. and, take my uh, shoes off. I haven't touched the ground yet, but that's the great thing about flying. You can take your shoes off. So I think it's like you know. Usually you have it by the door. So right up like yep. maybe on a windowsill oh that seems like the equivalent for if thank you're taking you, the fire escape thank you for respecting this combined asian household um <laughs> so <laughs> do you want a uh, uh, really important question doc should we get into pour over first should we get into aeropress first do you want to do french press first what do you think do you want to do some cold brew because it's the summer do you want to whip up some cream this is I like to too. think that you have to know I do not have enough context to meaningfully answer this question and are therefore asking me, let me see if I can determine to what end to make me feel foolish. No, you are compassionate uh, because you assume that I know more than I do. Uh, generous of you, but given the context inaccurate, um, I, I find myself at a loss. Okay. Patrick. Pour mm -hmm. over is very cool to watch. I will say, Ulez, from that answer, I think this is going to be an espresso night. Oh. Because we're not going to work on taste. We're actually going to work on scientifically measuring <gasps> the particular matter in each espresso shot. Come on in. Let's get started. And like Vion pulls yes. out just like an espresso machine and starts to explain just like, the, the heat, how the heat has to be appropriate, how the timing has to be like perfect, which kind of milk we're using, where that milk comes from, the fat levels, yeah. um, just all of that stuff. And it's and it's all mechanical. It's all it's not like it's not the poetry the of coffee yet. Of this coffee. is the yeah, no, it's a protocol. Coffee. Exactly, exactly. Hundred percent. The same way that you would isolate red blood cells, you would, yeah, hundred percent. That's it. This is also this is exactly it. how Sam learned to bake. Oh, <laughs> First I learned to isolate CD34 positive cells. Then I learned chocolate chip cookies. That was the order. <laughs> the natural progress of things. <laughs> so this, this is speaking the language of both player and character. Uh, so are we going to meet your ancestors? I ask. Mine? 
I glance over at Ulez. Which one are you, who of us are you talking to? Oh, yours, Vian. We have not encountered your ancestors, truly. Oh, uh, well, it's a little complicated, I guess, for us. I mean, I'm a ghost, <laughs> but uh, mm -hmm. other than that, usually kind of what happens with us is uh, that, you know, a generation comes and goes and, and then there's another. I mean, there's usually like the four, you know, three or four, sometimes five at a time, but um, we don't have like a strict connection. It's not, it's not, you know, uh, similar uh, to, to your folks, Ula's, in a way that we kind of swap out parts. It's, it's sort of the way we see it, it's kind of like a whole fresh existence. Um, the connection is tenuous at best. So then who holds you together? My ancestors hold me as uh -huh. our singer. And I have now met them. You, it seems, have met yours. And I look to where your star was and where right. now. And I wave my hand and it kind of like appears. Like it's always there, but I kind of just like hide oh, it sometimes. Cool. Uh, I guess uh, artifacts. I guess it, I guess it's a combination of, uh, of artifacts and, and culture. It's probably... It's probably our connection to the folks who came before us, if I were to say anything. So this is like a sign that people existed and had beliefs and passions. And uh, I guess in wearing that, I, I kind of I take that on. And I guess that's the connection to the ancestors that we have. And they hold you together. I'm, I guess I'm a little confused as to what exactly you mean by that. Well, when I was stabbed, when I was turned to stone, uh -huh. I did not fall to resonance. I was brought back together. You not, well, I suppose more selectively, you can, I just sort of tap on a table that you could face through if you wanted. <laughs> you are not strictly held together in the same way, but something does if not your ancestors what you know that's actually um that's actually a very good question doc i, I guess i kind of took it for granted because we have ghosts in stories and stuff so i just figured i was you know one of them in a way and what is their origin is it the same as yours it's usually a uh, unfinished business Except for Casper. He was just a kid. Oh, we enjoyed Casper. We would be yeah. friends with Casper. Yeah, he's a very friendly ghost. So that mm -hmm. makes sense. He might be the ghost of Richie Rich. Hard to say. <laughs> oh, they look similar. we like conspiracy theories. Although they might have met at one point, which would really negate that. I don't know. Anyway. Um, you know, I, and I guess at this point, uh, Vion glances over at the book that is like the origin, like the the book that has the sheriff's information in it that he has not touched. That was delivered oh. by Pete at the end of last season. Is that right? Yeah. Um, Pete, I won't do uh, it. Rick, don't worry. I'm not going to go to it. We don't have to do a lore drop right now, but, <laughs> but based off of uh, Cadrax's questions, I think that's sort of the first time that Vion's kind of glanced over at the book. You know, uh, before we left, I was very much, happy to reclaim my life in what I wanted to do and the meaning of it. And I wanted to sort of forge it. And I guess I was really enjoying kind of being a guy running around the city and going to jazz clubs and drinking coffee and doing magic shows in the park and stuff like that. But, uh, I hold up coffee. Yeah. 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 And a hell of a shot that you just pulled doc. <laughs> but I guess after our trip in space, these questions are kind of hitting a little differently. I guess this might be something I'm about to think about. I would like to meet them at some point if such a thing is available. And I'll lean in just a touch closer, perhaps just to Vion's ears, and fight them if necessary. Pat, pat. Thanks, friend. And this is foul. Well, it, yeah, well, it does sour. <laughs> <laughs> and the night goes on talking about coffee and everything um and uh 
as we make our way to the following morning. Um, by the way, we are centimeters from unlocking uh, the mysterious benefactor gift. Mere centimeters Ooh, on my metric. Small screen How's here. that be? <laughs> um, Makes and, me happy. Uh, I finally understand it. <laughs> yeah. 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 If, Everybody, everybody gets plus one to a mental attribute uh, if, if, if we get there. And just so close. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, and yeah, the next morning is the morning of Monday, August 16th, 2021. And uh, you are all and wherever you are at the moment watching PR1 News with Stella Combs, played by Laura Dern. And Stella uh, fills the screen. Um at a press conference this morning, Mayor Rona Carter, who got the top job after the death of former Mayor Jan Lindell, announced that she will run for re-election. And it cuts to footage of Mayor Carter, played by Tandiwe Newton, uh, and uh, Vian's sister, Amira Banerjee, played by Tia Sirkar, uh, is visible just right behind her there. Um, and the mayor says, we defunded the police and started to reform our whole system of justice. We've been a model for the world, proving people with powers and people without them can live side by side without disaster. But there is still so much to do. So this morning, I am proud to announce I will be seeking the privilege of continuing to lead this city in November's election. And as the crowd starts to cheer, it cuts back to Stella Combs. Not everybody is happy about it, though. Sovereign Party, Sovereignty Party leader Preston Conway had this to say, and it cuts to footage of reporter Nina Harmon, played by Eva Longoria, uh, interviewing Preston Conway, who is played by Sam Rockwell. Um, and Nina says, how do you feel about Mayor Carter's prospects for re-election? And Preston Conway says, I don't think she should get her hopes up. Since she defunded our police force, crime in this city has been out of control. And frankly, I only expect things to get more violent in the months to come. I seriously doubt whether voters of Port Ruby will overlook that when they head to the ballot box. And it cuts back to Stella Combs, who says, for the record, a PR1 investigation has shown the crime rate unchanged from the same period last year. Nonetheless, the Sovereignty Party, Sovereignty's Party's message seems to be reverberating with a significant portion of the electorate. In other news, the cotton candy eating world championships are coming to Mur Island, and the new Guitons and Dolls musical is taking the theater district by storm. All that and more when we return. Oh my god. Benny, you wake up at the office, right? That's where you went yes, to sleep? Yes, I do, and I... if. Wait, is something to have? Because I have a task I'd like to complete immediately upon waking up. But if you have something for me What's first, your task? That's fine. Um, I need to make a phone call. Who are you calling? Um, uh, Lila Pendry. Okay. Um, let's start there. Yeah. So I, I, yeah, I call her. Up. Phone rings a couple of times, and uh, then you hear a man's voice answer. Yeah. Um, hello, this is, uh, Benny Beckett. Uh, is, oh, hello? hey, it's uh, Henry. How's it going? Oh, hey, hi, good. Um, you can probably help me too. Um, Lila said that you guys were watching my mom's f f recently to make sure everything was good. Yep, we got a team stationed outside the farm. C can I add some people to that list? Sure. Um, what well, one, Dino Mink. Uh, he's my supervisor at work, and apparently he got approached by s some guy looking for me while we were gone and said he seemed like bad news. So I'm worried they might. He, Am I, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll look into it. Uh, and then if you could just make sure that uh, Adam Aubrey and Cal Daly are okay, too, that'd be great. A U B R E Y. Yeah. D A I L. You why? Caitlin has no idea, so you tell me if that's right. <laughs> yeah, and uh, he's like, I'll figure it out. Um, and uh, I spell like, it for him, but I, Caitlin doesn't know. Hey, don't worry about this kind of stuff. I tend to find, uh, you know, a lot of the cus clusters um, threats turn out to be overblown. Oh, I hope so, but just, you know, figured they're actually in the city. We'll let you know. I'll get back to you. Thank and you. Uh, 
yeah, you hang up and then your phone rings. It oh. is Dino's number. Oh God. Okay. Hi, Dino. And then you hear the voice of a man that you don't recognize. Uh, is this Benny Beckett? Um, who's asking? Uh, my name is Jerry Mink. I am Dino's brother. Hi. Yes, hey. this is Benny. What's up? I saw your text message and, well, I know you were about as close to Dino as anyone he worked with, so I thought I should be the one to tell you. Um, Dino is gone. He, uh, he He had a heart attack in the subway about a month ago. Oh my god. Um I'm so sorry for your loss. Oh, thank you. And uh I'm sorry too. He he didn't speak a lot a lot of the people he worked with, but uh he he seemed to think the world of you. So uh, he, sp he spoke very highly of you too. Yeah, we we didn't talk a lot, but you know brothers yeah um thank you for letting me know of course of course and uh um well i i hope everything else is okay with you yeah and take, uh take care you too benny take care exist well and she'll hang up the phone and just kind of hold it in her lap for a while and sit with that piece of information. So... Vion, Ulez, Kadrax, have you all been at Vion's place all night? If it's very early in the morning, um, I am still there. I'm. I want to get back before uh, Abigail and Dog are up. I want to walk Dog, um, but I will be there if it is early enough. Uh, it, you know, it's wherever you want to be right now. Um, So, um, if it's more convenient for you to have us, uh, I almost said clustered, then we can say it's before I go back. <laughs> Otherwise, I will be at my own apartment. Um, with, I don't think we have the proper equipment. I got home. I was like, I'm going to make a coffee for Abigail. Ah. It is not the same stuff because... <laughs> I don't know. It's not like half a laboratory of equipment. So I don't know how to apply Vion's <laughs> protocol to <laughs> our like hotel room coffee maker. Uh, but that is where I am. Okay. Um, Vion, Ulez, what are you doing? Tidying up the coffee mess. We probably <laughs> let it get out of hand since we spent like a good eight hours just trying all the different methods out, seeing what was fun, seeing what can be burned, seeing what works. Um, so not only is the counter covered, but like parts of like the kitchen floor, there's just like coffee grind spilled everywhere. Um, Laura's Lori... taking care of that. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> that is pure caffeine. All right. <laughs> uh, by the way, it looks like we've opened up the second goal. So uh, y'all have plus one to spend on any metro Ooh. attribute not to in exceed six. Let me know if you know what you want it to be. Thank you so much to everybody uh, for the support. Uh, that just leaves the uh, the after credits lore drop. So thank you. I'm going to take awareness. Plus one. Benny, so oh, Benny's going to take awareness. Mm -hmm. it's the first bump anybody's given to awareness in forever. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I accidentally put too many points in it and then realized I wasn't using it a whole lot. <laughs> Well, you are, you are Rick pretty much always the first person to spot everything. Yeah. yeah. Rick, Rick, Rick rolls our, 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 yeah. um, oh, our yeah. awareness for us. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. All I'm right. I'm going to take a point to my willpower. Hell yeah. Me too. Same. Okay. <laughs> <Everybody> <laughs> I would, but I cannot. I mean, I'm not putting it in awareness, 
I like surprises. <laughs> um, I would have right. willpower, but I already have people. six. Sounds like a fun Six. thing, right? What? You've, got, <laughs> you've got that. So, Benny, what are you doing? God, dude, I don't even know. What a morning. Okay. Um. I want to look up Dino and see when the service was. Uh, when the service was, okay. Um, or at least where I just want to find out when he was, where he, where he was buried, or if he was, you know, like if I can, if I can visit him, or if that's not an option. Um. Yeah, you, you know, you do some digging online and you find, you know, obituary or, you know, death notice. Yeah, yeah. Um, it looks like Vino died, uh, D Vino died, Dino died on uh, July 23rd. Um, and uh, he was buried on July 28th um, at, uh, oh, what did we call the cemetery? Um, Longview, isn't it? Yeah, right. Long, long view. Um, so it's I get I keep a list of all the locations pinned to my wall, but we have so many of them now. Yes. It's getting increasingly harder to scan the list. Uh, That's yeah, all right. I we believe... seem to keep coming back to the cemetery as our uh, NPCs keep dying. Wonder how that happens. Um, it, it, hey, it's don't blame me. Uh, Lawn Ridge, yeah, Lawn Ridge Cemetery, um, uh, which is uh, located uh, in Baronsdale. Um, you going there? Are you, are you telling the other anybody else? Are you? What are you doing? I think. I don't think she wants to go, right now. But I think she thought she wanted to, and then she figured out where it was. And then that was a lot of information all at once. Um. And then I think she calls her mom's. Yeah, phone rings a couple of times, and uh, then we will say, um, oh, let's say your mom, Lola, played by Jodie Foster, picks up the phone. Uh, hey, honey, you back? Yeah, we just we just got in yesterday. It's a really long flight. What? Flight from where? Uh, Brazil, actually. That's where we ended up at the end of the trip, so... Oh, wow. I always wanted to see Brazil. Was it nice? It was pretty interesting. We mostly saw water. Um, I got you guys some keychains from the airport, but I thought oh, you'd think that was fun. I, uh, I needed a keychain. I'm sure. It's the one of the spinny ones. Like the, the, uh, like the fidget, fidget ones. I know, I know Mom broke the other one I got her, so I thought she'd think that was fun. Yeah, she's going to love that. Well, how, how have you guys been? What have you... Oh, we've been good. Um, you know, it's been been quiet here on the farm. Um, that's good. Uh, we've been missing you. I missed you guys too. Hey, are you okay? I just got some really bad news this morning. As all, and I just you know, I was gonna call you anyways, but Well, you know, if you want to you. talk about it, we're already, we're always here for you. I mean, it's you. A, a, a friend I hadn't seen in a while passed away. And that was, you know, a lot to wake up to after an oh. eight-hour flight and two months of travel, so. Oh, God, honey, I'm so sorry. You know, it doesn't matter if you see people for a long time, you know, it's, your heart always stays with them. Yeah. But it'll you be should, okay. You shouldn't be alone. Yeah, I don't think so either. I have some friends. They were with me for most of the trip, and I think I'm going to go. I think I'm going to go find them. Yeah, yeah. Go, go find your friends and... and, and you know, I, I, I'll feel better when, you know, someone who cares about you is watching over you. Yeah, they've got my back. 
Um, tell mom I called and said hi, and I'll I'll talk to you guys soon. We love you, honey. Love you, mom. And Benny hangs up right away. So, and then I think she just cries. <laughs> and uh, I think we're going to take a 10 minute break right there. Um, we are. We've got everything unlocked up for the lore drop. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, we will be back here in 10 minutes. Stick around. Uh, we're going to be showing uh, another one of the fan art reels with all the amazing work that y'all have done, um, which we are super grateful for as well. Um, see you back here in 10. And we are back. A uh, little bit of a mood swing there in the first half. Um, and uh, uh, I would say the rest of the day goes on and uh, sometime in uh, the late afternoon, um, Benny, you get a call back from an unknown number. Okay, um, so I think after she had had a good sob, I think she was going to head to Vian's, because that's usually where the majority of our people are congregated. Okay. Um, so I don't know if she'd get this phone call, like, on the way or something, maybe? Um, yeah, let's say you're getting, you're coming down the block towards Vian's. Okay. Uh, when the phone starts ringing. Uh, after everything that happened, that's scary. And she's probably, uh, Millennial doesn't answer unknown numbers. However, she answers it. Uh, hello? Hey, Benny, it's, uh, Henry. Oh, hi. Hey. So, bad news. I heard. You know about Dino Mink? Yeah. I got a call from his brother this morning. Ah, uh, well, I'm sorry. I'm sure if you asked me to check into him, you must have been a friend. So uh, yeah. I, I am sorry for your loss. Um, yeah, not to sound like a conspiracy theorist. His brother said he died of a heart attack in the subway. What's the likelihood that that's not true? Well, I, you know, took advantage of my access uh, to uh, the Port Ruby Department of Safety database and uh, took a look at the autopsy, and, um, well, I got to tell you, you know, Dino Mink does not seem to have any history of heart conditions, didn't seem to be on any medications. I, myself, maybe I'm just, you know, old FBI guy, but uh, I got to find it at least a little bit suspicious when somebody asked me to keep an eye on somebody who might be in danger, and that person recently... Uh, passed away. I don't have any hard evidence, but um, I gotta tell you, I'm gonna be poking around in this a little bit. What were the dates of the dates that he called me again? Uh, Dino called... Left the message. Uh, yeah, okay. He left the message on July 16th. Okay, yeah. Uh, he called me July 16th and his obituary said he'd Died July twenty third. The message what was the subject he, of the call. The message he left me was saying that some some guy was asking about me. Hmm. So he said all he said was he looked like maybe a cop or an FBI guy, but it seemed sketchy. It wouldn't give his name, and he said he pretended he didn't know me, but that seems a little. Is no. that does that seem like a coincidence or am I about to go nuts here? No, that definitely does not seem like a coincidence. And I can tell you right now, the FBI and the Department of Safety, nobody was looking for you. I would have come across it when I checked into the autopsy. I so, don't think yeah, it probably wasn't. It was probably just someone who was dressed kind of sharp. That just kind of seems like something Dina would describe someone like that as. So that could be cluster. Yeah, that's what I thought. And frankly, in this day and age, you know, with all you supers running around, I can't say how hard it is to simulate a heart attack. You know, somebody can light themselves on fire. Somebody can certainly do that. So I don't know. You know, again, could be nothing. Could just yeah. be a coincidence. People die sometimes. But, 
It is a lot of coincidences. So I'm going to be poking around here. Okay. Did Vion send to the group chat the info about the visitor that they got, or is have you kept that to yourself still? Vion? Oh, I actually don't. You know what? It. That's a, if, I, it, if you two just talked about it, that's totally fine. But if yeah, you, I don't. Uh, you had said anything. I don't think Vion said anything yet. Okay, cool. Yeah. Cool. That's fine. So yeah, then. Yeah. Thanks. I'll keep you posted. And uh, he hangs up just as you're getting to Dean uh, to uh, Dino's to uh, uh, Vion's. Sorry. That's <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I think she has to like take. A uh, couple of grounding deep breaths there in the up front after that phone call. Uh, and then she's going to head up and see if anyone's home. All right. You head up the stairs. By the way, I should have said we were about $100 away from the Lord drop. Oh, my um, God. So thank Thanks. you for everybody for your support. Thank you. Um, and, uh, yeah, you make your way up the stairs. Um, and, uh, Vion, not, uh, Ulez, knock on the door. Uh, we are playing Skyward Sword. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um and but like the Wii version, so it is very difficult to get anything done. Mm -hmm. Um Willis <laughs> is instructing you on the best ingredients to put together to boost your stamina. Um we can, just, really fight. We can, we can yeah. just fight the boss. Uh we'll, we'll just rush it. No, 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 no. We have we, to acquire all of the hearts. We have to max out your stamina, and no. we must discover all of the places and talk to all of the NPCs. Oh, it's so low. what if we just try to get good? I know we've done this 40 times this particular fight but we have to collect all the koroks all 400 okay all right okay yeah let's do it let's do it we nothing else going on today okay. uh, and then we hear the knocking <laughs> <laughs> oh uh we are present you may enter yeah yeah and we, and we'll we've come got and like come our <laughs> nunchucks up yeah <laughs> cute hey benny what's up oh a lot i think Oh. Um, would you like to coffee? Yeah, maybe. Is Cadrax around too, by chance, or? Uh, they want to go walk uh, their dog, I believe. Okay. Um. You're right. And right, I'll put them down. Uh. Dino's dead. Oh. Uh, Vion's wow. just gonna walk up and. Just like and like all that wee jokey Zelda voice like drops away. Would you like a hug? Yeah. Okay, come here. And she gives you a very big hug. Come here. Okay. Why you come sit down? Let's get you a glass of water. Uh. We and we get that. we have some empanadas left over. Eat like you need to eat. You're actually burning a lot of calories. Um, you're processing a lot, so just eat drink this water we'll get you like a little bit of coffee just to like give you like a caffeine boost you want a blanket here just take this blanket Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> <gets a> <laughs> yeah okay ulas and i are going to shower you in like affection for like a little bit okay. uh just that's just what's going to happen just so you know yeah uh yes cool that's fine um there's more though that's i mean uh -huh. that's a lot and it sucks but i called I tried to call Lila to ask her if she could, you know, keep an eye on Adam and Cal and Dino because they're just, you know, the other people around who, you know, know me and are close to me. And then I got a phone call from Dino's brother uh -huh. who said that Dino is, had passed of a heart attack. Oh, heart like failure. A week after he left me that message about the guy who came to see him looking for me. And Henry Park also thinks that that's really suspicious. Uh, I'm sorry, what? Yeah. Were you about to ask the same question I was about to ask, Ulysses? We were going to make a statement. So please ask your question and we will follow it up with our statement. Perfect. That sounds great. What time again was this? Uh, around what time in July? Um, he called me in July 16th. And his obituary said he passed away on the 23rd. So seven days. Okay. Someone popped by the apartment mm -hmm. around that time. Trying to that get in. That was our statement. I'm sorry that I stepped on your toes for that. I, oh, I should have. No. That's, well, yeah. we say, you say. This is what our team does. What do you have? Do you have the day exactly? 
or what did Sandy say? Yeah, Rick, what's the exact date that Sandy said? Or did Sandy uh, do an exact date, I think Sandy or was, was it vague, a but weeks ago? yeah, Sandy was pretty being... vague. Um, you had come home on August 15th, and uh, he said it was a few weeks ago, you know. Yeah. So, does your um postcard give you the date you're seeing at all, or is that not a thing that's true? I don't about think that so, power? Unfortunately, <laughs> I wish. I don't think it does. We're, we're it's never come up. Yeah, just because we never. I mean, yes. <laughs> right. But not this whole time. <laughs> Thank well, you for reminding us. Figured I'd ask. I don't know. In fact, me forgetting that's a pointed determination. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. So people are looking for us. Okay. Is Sandy so okay? Nice. Confirmed. Oh, Sandy as well. Although, yes, he brought us the empanada. Not, hmm, those foods on the counter. Empanadas. Yeah. Good. Thank you. Uh, okay. Is okay. is Cadrex's roommate okay? Let's get. Uh, we're gonna call Cadrex right away and okay. put them on speakerphone. Cadrex, you get a call. I'm also happy to see you down. <laughs> would you Would you please put all four of your limbs on the foot? Hello, this is the Caden Dialta. <laughs> Uh, hey, Doc. Uh, Ula's here is a, a, a real quick down, though. We got some stuff going on. Uh, we greet you. Um, we have reason to believe that either us or uh, individuals associated with us have, in fact, been followed and or murdered through heart failure. And this is something that we would like to explore and keep a lookout for. I am on my way. Are your people well? She was fine when she left for work today. Pardon we must me. find ways to safeguard them, but we are not certain how. Uh, we yeah. are the safeguards. Ah. Yeah, it looks like we're going to have to do some uh, heroic stuff. At the same time, we're going to be kind of going to some classic moves here. It looks like we're doing some investigation. Um, and uh, Doc, if there's any way that you can... And I'm sorry if this is crass, Benny, but uh, maybe look into some autopsy reports. We could start to maybe figure out exactly what happened to Dino. Henry looked to, looked into it already, too, so. Oh, okay. Well, Not I guess we can get the information from Henry, then, yeah. directly. We don't even have mm -hmm. to do any hacking or anything. Good. Excellent. Um, my buckler is now strapped on. Mm -hmm. uh, investigation. Looking over medical reports. Understood. Thanks, Baton. Doc. <laughs> <laughs> And we can like hear this like over like yes, yeah. <laughs> probably <laughs> like metal, yeah. Like because you're you're you know on the side table, and I'm calling this out as I'm getting, yeah. as I am readying myself uh, for battle in service of those I love. Uh, so I will fly over just as soon as I have checked in on Abigail. Of course. Uh, thank you, Cadrex. Um, perhaps we. We are considering an object that might assist us in monitoring our allies better, but we will update you once we uh, see you in person. Understood. Not the idiom. I still do not understand the notion of being in person. Is one not always in one's own person? But right? taking that as okay. granted and human language as... We find them quite fun, mostly because they are mainly nonsensical. It makes a sense to them and to ponder how they think ah. is their language is an insight into their nature and we must study it accordingly. It is. Therefore, I will see you in person as this is apparently. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Not. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much, Doc. We'll see you soon. <laughs> All right, Kadrak, you head off to Serrano Memorial to look for Abigail. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna text because like is not oh, she's okay. in surgery, um, sure. so it's it's you know uh, call me when you can. I think they're going to physically fly, but they're gonna like set up the like, please give okay. me a call. Um, sure. So that you know, worst case, she just hears like a. <laughs> you send that text. Um, Ulez, Benny, Dion, what are you doing? Um, go ahead. 
uh, uh, I, Benny is, I mean, after being bundled, I think she, after spewing all of the information she has just received and then given back, I think she's fully, like, leg bounce a little bit, like, just nonstop uh, while the whole phone call happens. And then uh, I think she just very suddenly turns to Vion and says, um, would you do me a gigantic favor? Yeah, you don't have to ask what you need. Um, I don't think I can do any more um, horrible phone calls today. Would sure. you would you look up Adam Aubrey and Cal Daly online and make sure there are no obituaries from while we were gone? Yeah. Um I don't think I can I don't think I can call them right now. Don't worry about it. We got it. Uh Ula's and I are on it. Oh and, uh, yes. in fact, yeah, I'll hand you my i I mean I'll hand you my phone, but I mean you have yours. I think it's just out of instinct. <laughs> but Ulez, you want to uh, give me uh, an interface roll? Um, for the phone call? Uh, she doesn't want you to just want you to search. like just Google them to see if there's an obituary online. Oh, understood. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I do want to lay out that while Ulez, ooh, while Ulez is doing this, um, they are starting to take apart one of your espresso machines, Fion. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry. What? <laughs> yep. <laughs> Uh, Ulis, those are very expensive. I know, but I promise it'll be worth it. Um, that's going to be a nine total. You do not find anything about Adam Aubrey or Cal Daly. They, uh, there is no relevant information that concerns them, an obituary or anything prominent that has happened in them in the past two months. We have confirmed this, Benny. Uh, Benny, do you want us to give them a quick call and just tell them to just sort of be on the lookout? Um, I don't, I don't, I don't want to, I don't think I want to scare them. Okay. Um, but I did tell, uh, Henry Park said he'd keep an eye on them. Okay. That's, that's better than anything we can do at this point, so. Oh, no, okay, no, 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 Vion, we can do better. Oh. And, like, then they just start to, like, rip out the power cable in one of the espresso machines. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, I'm, um, please. On board. Let uh -huh. me explain. Uh, we do apologize because we understand that um, based off the extensive explanations you offered, Cadrax, about copy, that these might have been valuable. However, um, we have considered how best to defend our allies. And while it is not within my parameters to create weapons necessarily, what we have offered is a... And they start to kind of like bundle different pieces of like different espresso machines, different copy makers, um, and to make these little, um, almost watch faces. <laughs> um, hear me out. Um, this, uh, so Rick, can I roll gadgets before I even finish explaining what this is gonna do? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, Liz, uh, Liz's uh, recent power upgrade was to add the gadgets power. You have gadgets? <laughs> Liz is now a bit of a mad scientist. He's going to get torn apart. We introduced Perfect. a Wii, and I know that's not going to survive to the end of the week. <laughs> <laughs> I will not. Yes. Fuck yes. Um, that's going to be an eight. Well, you got to choose a power you want to duplicate. So, what is it you oh. want to do? Um, so I want to build a watch that can basically monitor the vitals of anybody wearing the space that kind of has pressed against their skin, um, you know, with my limitation in, in to be considered as well. Okay. Um, and you got an eight. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're going to call that. that is should I, should like I add ESP. my special my robotics, electronics, and mechanics? I didn't even think of that. Yeah, you absolutely can. Um, that that would give you an extra... What is that at right now? Two. So, so that brings you to a 10. Yes. Um, you have to be imitating a power. So we're going to say that this is basically kind of an imitation of ESP, allowing you to perceive things in distant locations as if you were actually there. Okay. Um, so e with a 10, you are able to create these devices. Um, success gives you a gadget to duplicate that power for the chapter. Failure means you must make a determined effort to try again. You can spend a point of determination to produce a gadget automatically rather than making a test. You're deprived of all your equipment. Okay, so it's like this, you know, it has a limited lifespan. It works for a chapter, you know, so... Um, Interesting. We'll say, okay, that's a detail I hadn't considered. All right. 
Yeah. Um, so it's like we will say you have these now, um, and they will work for I will say, you know, a reasonable narratively driven amount of time after you give them to whoever you want to have them. Okay, perfect. Um, and Ulez will hold up like a handful of these watch faces. These will monitor the vitals of our allies so we can determine if they are in crisis or not, and that will better allow us to assist them. Uh, we just require some straps. We are not certain what to use. Do you have any watch straps that we could... Oh, maybe a ribbon would be good. Yeah, we've got ribbon. Um, I'll say, if I'm just basing this off of uh, me, it's going to be washi tape, yarn, definitely <laughs> some ribbon. Yep. This, uh, some, maybe some old like camera straps. Ooh, I like that. Oh, wow. I think we've unlocked the lore drop. Uh, thank you so hey. much, everybody. Wow. That was, Don't wow. the nunchucks yeah. have... <sighs> Oh, they do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Those are cannibalized. Off. Oh, so quickly. While I'm listing <laughs> off all the stuff like around that, like, uh huh, uh huh. Oh, these are perfect. Oh, uh, I'm gonna kind of loop them through the faux watch face. Expensive now because they don't make. Okay. What? <laughs> oh, look at this! And like they just proudly show you all the genuinely movies. incredible. Genuinely, genuinely incredible. We might have to deal with some problems down the road um domestically speaking in terms of getting some other stuff to work but <laughs> genuinely absolutely incredible Ulez. this is great work thank I you think, i think after benny made uh you guys look that up for her i think just completely just like co like collapsed back into the couch like just just tension bled out and i think during while all this happened i think she is slowly like reinflated just like a little bit <laughs> to like this is normalcy I can do that. I can do normalcy, <laughs> like just absorbing the, the company. I like the idea that as you can do normalcy, and you're just sort of like back on the couch, Lori. <laughs> oh God! I <laughs> you. Hi, Benny. Don't move. <laughs> don't move <laughs> quickly. Don't make quick movements. Mm. We learned that was bad. Mm -hmm. Hi. Do you, you know it can turn into fire? Right? That would hurt you. It would hurt you. <laughs> Don't try me. They're hungry. Yeah. I don't always. have anything. I don't have any food. She's <laughs> and, and and she the, the and, and the Lorgen uh, uh grabs your hat ah. and, and, and starts running around to the couch with it. Oh, that might be consumed. I'm yeah. not certain yet. Hold on one second, really quick. I'm gonna walk, I'm gonna phase out the door. I'll be gone for a little bit. I'm gonna come back. I went I went to the trash chute. I've got a bag of trash. Here, here you go. This here you just here you go. And I'm just gonna hold out a bag of trash. Yeah, oh, and, wow. and it just like unhinges its jaw and just like eats the bag entirely, you know, without even looking inside. Oh. And just and, and, and throws the hat up into the air and just runs oh, into the bedroom. God. Lori oh. understands what is food and what is not food. Sure. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's one takeaway of what just happened. Uh, sure. I think that was more of a like a hostage situation. Um, but that's okay. Oh. <laughs> And as this is going on, Cadrax, you can arrive on the fire escape. I will say you get a text from Abigail that says, about to go into surgery. What's up? Uh, did anyone give you any trouble while I was gone? And what kind of trouble? If you have to ask, do I need to know? Nothing really comes to mind. Glad to hear. Have a good surgery. TTYS. Okay. Send. You used it right Art. that time. Explanation Send. point, explanation point. <laughs> Oh, so that comes in right before uh, Cadrex sends a heart emoji back. <laughs> and and you get a heart emoji in return. Um, and uh, yeah, you hear the, the knock on the window, Ulis. Oh, that must be our ally. And they'll let you in. This window is off. I see remnants of trash bag. Oh, so Lori is setting, settling in. Oh, incredibly well. We haven't really discovered anything they won't consume yet. And then you, from the bedroom, you hear... 
it. And then like there's like a loud crash. It's like it sounds like no. something fell. No. <laughs> and Vion fades uh -oh. through the wall. I think that's okay. <laughs> I suppose all beings from Pixis has a, have a rough arrival. <laughs> so, do you have these medical findings from Henry Park? I oh yeah, could we, could, could we have asked for that? <laughs> well, during all of this. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, have sure. Email no, Henry, see if we can. Can. Mm -hmm. um, and what we'll say, Henry uh, texted you over a report. Cadrex, give me an intellect roll, study the report. Uh, so fun story. I asked um, for Hanukkah this year. I asked my family to give me dice so that I could roll them and blame them if they're bad. Um, hey. This one is from my mom, and it has little like cracks on it, like uh, if Cadrex had done a done a quake. Yes, I love that. Oh my god. Um, all right, Finding that's ways a, that's to blame your family for stuff is the spirit of Hanukkah, folks. I also <laughs> have a bright red uh oh die from my aunt. It's perfect. <laughs> okay, how did you do? What'd you get? Nine. Um, Nine. Oh, I can add surgery. Never mind. Ten. Ten. Okay. So for you, you know, this is, you know, you, you've seen a lot of reports like this. And yeah, it's, you know, Dino Mink seemed to have. You know, a very healthy heart for a guy in his 40s. You know, it's like... Oh, he's in his 40s. Okay, that changes. Yeah. Okay. Um, there is, you know, no no signs of heart disease. There are no signs of, um, you know, clogged arteries, anything like that. Um, in fact, it's like he, he's so kind of healthy that this immediately strikes you as unusual. Well, so there's always the possibility that he exaggerated his uh, lifestyle history. That is fairly common. And those things can contribute to heart attack risk. Nonetheless, I don't see any other risk factors here. Is it, is he in the most common age demographic? He is below the average age. Uh, and more than 20% of people uh, who experience heart attacks uh, are in his age cohort. But this is not, given the circumstances, I would find it more likely that he were, for instance, injected with potassium chloride in the subway or equivalent oh. such things. It does not take any sort of extraordinary action to stop a human heart. They are fairly delicate. Things they are fragile. Huh. Okay. It is just that. Oh boy. Um. And that's a great insight into Cadrex's bedside manner that they just realized. Maybe it just <laughs> it just begins to dawn on them. Yep. 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 How are you doing, Penny? <laughs> I'll. Um, I. Uh, not entirely sure. Angry, mostly. Sad. I don't know. We were gone, and he's probably dead because of me, so I don't really know how to deal with that can of worms yet, but... He is not dead because of you. If someone did this deliberately, and it may not be that... People do have heart attacks and die. My mentor did, for instance. But if this was deliberate, you aren't why he died. Someone else is why he died, and that person will pay for it. We have a spirit of justice and everything. Yeah. And the star appears. Mm -hmm. uh, the compass. Oh, wait, the compass. The compass. Yeah. <laughs> Spend too much uh, time in space. <laughs> we also have some alternative solutions to maintaining or to observing the vitals of our allies. And Ula shows up. The, shows off their little gadgets, um, with very very handmade straps. Uh, you know, we're talking <laughs> wee handles, ribbon, yarn. Um, 
maybe a sock that was kind of cut up. You know, lots of things. Um, if we could get our allies to wear these, perhaps we, I would be able to maintain observation on their vitals to ensure that nothing bad has happened to them. And if it has, well, we can do our best to track them. These are made of human objects, but does not appear to be of human engineering. Though this oh, no. digital output does seem familiar to me. Yeah, does it? <laughs> Uh, that might have been. Oh, that was definitely a part of the uh, the really shiny chrome espresso maker. Yep, it was. We used this last night. I remember. Yes. Yeah. Well done. Yeah. I like how you integrated the circuitry. Oh, uh, well, we thank you. If you can give me the one with the ribbon, I think Abigail would like it. Oh yes, absolutely. <laughs> That's the prettiest one. So, what do you all want to do? Catrax absolutely dipsed it for their loved one. <laughs> <laughs> They're not about um, that. I'm going to quickly give Amira a call. Sure. Uh, phone rings. Uh, Banerjee. Hey, it's me. Um, oh, hey. I haven't heard yeah. this voice in a while. Uh, I, I would love to chat a little bit longer. Uh, and You know what? Actually, now that I think about it, uh, it would be great to get uh, to catch up sometime soon and get coffee in person um, somewhere maybe not near where you work. Okay, do I want to ask? Uh, uh, possibly, uh, but the answers aren't going to be too interesting. But the uh, I have a quick question for you. Did anyone come around and ask about me or uh, the folks that I hang out with while I was gone? I mean, no. Um, okay. I gotta okay. tell you, I haven't been the easiest to reach in the last couple of weeks as we've been preparing for the big announcement. I don't know if you heard, but uh, Carter's running again. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm working on the campaign, obviously. Yeah, that's a great point. Okay. Uh, yeah, sis, let's get some coffee or tea sometime soon, like in the next like day or two. Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll have my secretary uh, call you and set something up. Actually, you know, um, why don't we keep this between us just to be safe? Okay. Yeah, it's one of those things, sis. It's one of those, yeah, okay <sighs> things. Okay. I don't know um, for sure. I don't know for sure, but let's just kind of keep it between us. I'll call you tomorrow. Great. That sounds good. All right. She hangs up. You. Oh, well, yeah, that's my family. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Uh, now, should we Let's... get in touch with Dugan? Yes. That seems reasonable. That's a great idea. Benny, how you doing? Uh, much the same. Okay. But if, uh, at any, okay. You know, if at any point you want to tap out, um, this place is your place. Make yourself a home. All right. Yeah, let's give Dugan a call. Okay, you call the burner phone that you gave him but you get no answer it just uh, goes to the voicemail which is the generic message uh, b can't hear you thanks i thought i had the button um how do we feel about this is this something that we want to accept or should we investigate it further we know that mm, humans are not fond of answering their phones, but the folks yeah. that we communicate with are pretty good at it. He had incentive to pick up too, especially with this phone. So that's not great. Mm. You can't trace it. Can you? I don't know how any of that works. Wait. Yeah. You should be able to, right? Actually, oh, um, doc, you would know better. You're smarter than I am. <laughs> you want to try and see if you can figure out where the phone is. Yeah. If there's an right. active GPS signal and the phone was still on, I mean, we were able to call it and make a connection. Give me an interface roll uh, or, you know, an intelligence roll. You can yeah. add investigation or whatever. Um, that is going to be 9 plus 2 is 11. 
Okay, with an 11, you can tell, you know, obviously that, you know, the voicemail you are getting is just, you know, some separate computer, you know, wherever that houses the voicemail. Mm -hmm. um, the GPS signal from the phone is either dead or out of power. Ah, it seems that I cannot make any kind of connection with the um, burner phone. Does it this? log the last known coordinate date and time? Oh, it would before it finally went offline. Uh, am I able to determine that, Rick? Um, give me another roll, another oh. intellect roll. That is literally the same. Um, that's still an eleven. Uh, it went offline the last time it you know touched base with its server um was uh the evening of august 14th god damn and the location um there is no location with it ah really should have put a tracker in that guy <laughs> um Is it all the way back? Like, locations are not associated with this data? Or yeah. could we narrow it down? But, okay, cool. It, it I was just, like, you know, you know, you can't get location signal if you're, like, in a garage kind of deal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's just one of those things where it's like every once in a while this phone touches base with its, you know, its server to see if anyone's left a voicemail. It doesn't, right. you know, it, it checks for information, you know. Yeah, yeah you can pick up the it. cell yeah. tower that it pinged off of, but in a place like Port Ruby, that is a very gross instrument. Mm -hmm. hmm. It's very dense. Well, this did not truly provide any information. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, other than August 14th, and there does seem to be a lot that happened around these dates, between the 14th to the 20th. No, that was no, like 14th two days was ago? two days ago. Two days ago. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, August okay. 14th, J July 16th was That's the, what was I the phone up. call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. And July 23rd. Nope, no we got okay. back to Port Ruby on the 15th of August. And so it's today's the 16th? Uh, yeah. It, well, uh, yes, it is the next morning, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, no, it is, it is later that afternoon, right, is what we said. So Yeah. Um, this is actually oh. the you know we are getting close to basically the evening of the fifth of the of the sixteenth. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it was yeah, yesterday, two days ago. Two days ago. Two days ago. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um. Well, we don't have that lead. Let's come up with a game plan. Something could have happened. You know what? Let me ask this, Doc. Uh, you just said you know there's ways to create this effect. Um. With powers, with chemistry, yes, causing a heart attack is fairly straightforward. A variety of means. Okay, uh, I tried. I'm I'm gonna go so far as to put this on the board. Powers, um, mm -hmm. would be instantaneous or at least somewhat immediate. That doesn't seem like a thing that would take a while. Um, mm -hmm. Chemically speaking, is that something that takes a while, Doc, or is that like also right away? Um. Depends on the particular chemical. Many things can stop a heart by various means, depending on uh, the mechanism. But potassium chloride is rather rapid. You notably use it to execute people. Got it. And I hate that. Okay. Um, yes. Maybe then we go to the subway. Maybe we go to the subway. I can try my best to postcog it. I mean, oh. we have to track down the exact train and everything like that, but can we get that right information now, that's all from I got. Henry? The, which which subway he was? Found yeah, in? absolutely. The police clearly did some kind of basic investigation, and they obviously know where they found his body. So it's like mm -hmm. you know, um, yeah, Henry. Let's say you know, in the file he turned over to you, uh, there is a photo of uh, you know, took a photo of the body. Um, in place where it fell, and it was uh, on the platform, uh, we will say, at, on the um, the Z train. Okay, cool. Oh my goodness, people of Port Ruby catch some Zs. Rick Bud, you have to be kidding me. <laughs> uh, gotta catch the Z. 
<laughs> Shem de Lev, folks. Is it the same? Is it the same line as the J train? Are you doing the exact, <laughs> the exact map uh, to go to Brooklyn? Um, okay, so um, we should go do that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, we will say that the Z train cuts through, uh, you know, Lower Avalon into um, Northern Baronsdale, and then sort of goes along the North Shore of Baronsdale, uh, eventually meet, meeting its terminus in the vault. Um, and this was uh, this photo was taken in a station in uh, Jake. Can I have the Lower Avalon Northern Baronsdale map? Um, this photo was taken in a station that was in, uh, we'll say, Ridge Gardens, um, which uh, the station is not far from where the Knights of the Blue were going to depart for their mission to the Global Union and where you, you know, met the alien strike force, that kind of, that, that area. Yeah, you can see right there on the northern shore, it is uh, um, Ridge Gardens right there, uh, which is, you know, right at the base of the McQuilly Bridge. I think I have the van here, but do we, do we want to drive? Do we want to fly? We can fly. Yeah. That is often quicker. Let us fly then. Okay, great. Let's fly. All right. Cadrax, you take everybody out to the fire escape and you rise into the air, and uh, night is beginning to fall on. On Baronsdale, um, it is a warm August night, and you swoop over, uh, you know, the buildings of Fort Trumbull. You pass Yard Hill, Baronsdale Heights, and eventually uh, make your way up to Ridge Gardens, where you land, and come out uh, by, you know, say we'll just say you land right by the entrance to the Z train. Um, I assume you go down into the subway. It is, you know, if you've ever seen a New York City subway platform, it's, you know, just like that. It's kind of dirty. It smells like urine down there. Um, this one is got a lot of construction going on. It looks like it was probably severely damaged in a certain earthquake that took place in this area, a kind of catastrophic earthquake that somebody set off. I'm not going to name any names. Which one? <laughs> And, uh, yeah, um, it looks like it is still kind of in the process of being reconstructed, but just enough of it is back online to allow the subway to maintain its route. You make your way over to the area where, in fact, I'm going to actually, let's make your roll for this. Uh, via, uh, uh, anybody who wants to do investigation, give me a roll mm -hmm. for that. To see if you can match up the photo with the spot. Oh, heck yes. Uh, not my best. Has a ten. Beyond what you do, I got a twelve. Okay, between a ten and a twelve, that's fine. Y'all kind of spend some time walking around trying to compare, you know, floor tiles, marks on the floor, marks on the, you know, the support beams until you find a find because like every area of this place kind of looks exactly alike, you know, and eventually you find the spot where you would guess Dino Minks body fell after he had his heart attack well all you all right i'm gonna post cog um but i'm not gonna broadcast because i guess i can't there's like folks around can you select can you, broadcast? Yeah. you can't can you just broadcast it just the three of us I uh, can I wreck. Um, I I think you can. Yeah. Oh, cool. Um, I I, I would say so. Uh, wow, it's like I never really thought about it before because it's just rarely come up. But um, yeah, I I would say you you can control broadcast who you bubble, broadcast but too. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, let's broadcast. Uh, I'm gonna uh, post cog. This is four plus roll. I want to use the community determination, but I feel like we should maybe save that for something this, later this episode. <laughs> It ain't so, the end of the day yet. <laughs> going to tell you right now, a billion people have passed over this spot, so it is going to be a fairly difficult Yeah, you difficult can take it threshold. if you want. How do we what feel? If, yeah. mm -hmm. Cadrax? Uh, I was just going to say, uh, that is very true. And if perhaps uh, 
I could perform like a vibrational sifting uh, to try to like get some of the more recent refuse out of the way, try to like clear so that there are fewer potential false positives for Vion to post cog on. I want to create a maneuver that he could maybe get some activates out of. Okay, just say that one more time. What's the maneuver? Um, you know how you shake something and it'll it'll sort of separate stuff out. The concern here is that Vion might touch uh, and then post cog off of some stuff that has gotten walked through since then, and then that be useless. I want to try to get Sift that by stuff date, clear. kind of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, give me give me a complex task roll. Uh, 13. Oh, no, 14. Okay, for a 14, I'm going to say that that is uh, a... That is a moderate success, which uh, I think costs you a point of stamina, right? Because it takes a lot of concentration. The marginal one does. Oh, it's the marginal. Sorry, ah, moderate marginal. All these words start with them. <laughs> um, yeah, so that gives you what? What was? What, what, what? It gets the thing. It doesn't get us the activate. It doesn't Sorry, get you free activates. Okay. It gets you, but it does get you the condition that you can use. I appreciate you it. Want. I think we should still use the determination, um, but now, I mean, I guess we can key off that. Yeah, I mean, we did it. So let's sift through, but we're in it. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Great. That brings you down to one point of community determination. Beyond, okay. give me a postcog roll. Four plus roll equals, oh my God, I don't lie. We got a little pumpkin. That's the best we can do. It's a 10. It's the best we can do. Don't, wait, 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 changing you, to like a Santa die now or something like that. Or, wait, or, 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 check, my Twitter, Rick, check my Twitter and tell me. Check oh, my Twitter be? name and tell me if it's a Christmas Twitter or not. Okay, okay, I will check your Twitter as soon as this game is oh, over. Hold on, you just spent used a point of determination, so wouldn't that make it twelve? Yeah. Oh Six yeah. Plus if you, four plus plus, plus plus two. You got are, it. Are we okay, using then. point of determination for your uh, condition? Sam. Um, I established it. I established okay. the quality, but I didn't like. I got to do major or better to get an activate on it. Yeah. Oh, okay, so you it. spent the point of determination to activate yeah. the condition, yeah. which so gives you plus two on the roll. Yeah. There we go. Oh. Taking advantage of the condition they created, and it was. It, I set a very high threshold because, like, separating out, you know, that kind of stuff. The way Sam was talking about, yeah. it sounded very difficult to me. Um, but. You take advantage of the conditions that brings you to a total of 12, if my math okay. is correct. Um, and I will say for 12, you all go into, you know, beyond state. Uh, and um, you see the Z train pull in. The doors open and a bunch of people um, get out. The... Uh, Dino Mink steps out and he's carrying a camera. And he, he kind of walks out and he watches the crowd that just exited and he raises the camera and starts snapping photos of something or someone. And then he lowers it and starts like looking through the photos, you know, like in the viewfinder, like see, you know, see what he captured. And then as he's standing there, he kind of looks up again and kind of grabs his chest. You can't see what he sees, but he falls. And then the vision ends. Um, I would like to play a trouble against myself. Yeah. Uh, fire close is kept, but very specifically, um, Benny is standing there in the subway, Z train watching this happen, you know, in her own mind, and just like hot, angry tears. But it's like, you know, when like liquid burns and liquid is on fire, just oh. down, like, just she's not cr like sobbing, crying, but like just angry tears in there. And she is like on, like, on fire. Like, it is. 
yeah, and she's absolutely. just standing there staring at the place where Dino is standing. And, you know, you start catching some looks and you see some safety officers sort of start to run from down the platform being like, hey, hey, no fires in the subway. Come on, take it outside. Um, we, I'm going to teleport us outside. <laughs> sure. Um, I'm not going to make a roll for that since this is not a combat scenario and you have Ulez here. So, you know, I mean, there's a lot of ways you can teleport. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you take everybody back up. You are now at street level right outside the entrance to the Z train. Okay. And oh. that kind of like snaps her out of it a little bit. And she kind of just is like rubbing flames like across her face and like off of her shirt. Uh, okay. What were you going to say, Ulez? Oh, I wanted to know if Benny, are you well? No, probably. Yeah. How do we assist? I don't, I don't even know. I don't even, we, we could, we, he was probably doing something really stupid. He was, could we access his camera? Where, where would they, where would they have that? Oh, I wanted to ask you, is that something that your company would keep, or would it be held by the police if they were investigating if this death was natural or murder? The, pl the police? The, where they did the autopsy, was maybe? Was the camera listed on the contents of the police report that we studied? Yeah. How are these reports handled now, too? Yeah. Um, right, because this is CS... No, it's not, it wouldn't be CSI, I guess. Would, like, the, would it be, like, not with his, scene. like his like the, the medical i don't know if it would be with medical like with his personal effects or if it would be evidence yeah. but they're they are they're treating uh, as a heart attack special circumstances yeah. so it wouldn't have been kept it would have been personal yeah. effects it should be on the report uh, okay. on that i immediately again. pull out my phone mm -hmm. and i call dino's phone again and hope that jerry still has it he's his his brother would maybe have his personal effects okay it rings a few times and then uh it picks up uh hello Hi, Jerry. Yeah. This... I've Benny again. Sorry, I'm so sorry. This is a lot. Um, did 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 they give you Dino's personal effects after everything? Well, that he had I on mean, him. Yeah, I'm afraid there wasn't much. It's just sort of his wallet. And, was was uh, there a camera? camera? Yeah, there was a, ca a camera. Um, is there? Are you still in Port Ruby? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still by, uh, Dino's place, packing up his belongings. I am so sorry to do this to you, but would you mind if I swung by and took a look at it? Um, no, I, you know, in fact, I think he said you're a photographer. I, I've got no use for it. You can have it if you want. I'm sure he'd want you to have it. Okay, um. Just text me the address and we'll 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 be there in a little bit. Thank you again. I'm sorry. I know this is weird. No, no, not at all. Um, I I think this makes sense. And uh, he hangs up, and you get a text uh, for Dino Mink's address in Grenell Circle. Okay. Uh, Doc, can you fly us? Certainly. And uh, yeah, you come down and Grenell Circle is generally a pretty nice neighborhood, but this building looks like it is one of the lesser buildings in the area. Um, and uh, it's, you know, uh, it's probably about four stories or so. And uh, D-Mink is listed on uh, the directory. I press to see if it will, we can be buzzed in. Yeah. And as soon as you press it, you just hear, uh, Benny? Yeah, yeah, it's me. Um, I have a couple friends too. Sorry, we're gonna come invade the space for a second, but we'll we'll be out of your hair as soon as we can. No, no worries at all. I could use the company. And uh, he, uh, you hear the door buzz, um, and uh, there is an elevator that uh, takes you up to the fourth floor. Um, and uh, at the, the end of the hall, uh, door opens, and uh, you see Jerry Mink. Um, if I had to cast him, I'd say he is uh, played by Bob Odenkirk, and uh, he is dressed in a military uniform, um, you know, 
you know, the khakis, the casual uniform, short sleeves. Uh, and uh, he's a uh, kind of looks at Ulez. Yeah. Oh, oh, we, we greet you. Oh, Hi. we, uh, oh, ben. Ah. yeah, um, well, we greet you too. Um, Benny will hold out her hand. It's, it's really nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you too. And he shakes your hand. Um, these are my friends, um, Kad Kadrax and uh, Ulez and Vian. Um, we're sorry, did I, <laughs> I probably would have mentioned you as Caden actually? Sorry, Caden <laughs> and Ulez and, and Vian. Um, Come on in. Uh, I just ordered some pizza um, and uh, you come oh. in and the apartment is now mostly packed up. Uh, there's just a lot of cardboard boxes, packing tape, that kind of stuff. Um, and sitting on top of one, so that one of them, there is an open pizza box that has one slice removed from it. Help yourself. Oh, thank you. Um, Let's see, you wanted that camera, and uh, he kind of picks up, you know, a box cutter, and he's like, "Sure, I put this somewhere. Hmm, probably should have labeled these." Uh, and he starts, you know, cutting boxes open, you know. Uh, I'll help him look at, as them. he like opens them. I'll kind of like help hold things and just be an extra set of hands. I'm gonna quickly just say this. I'm gonna I'm gonna cast Danger Sense. Uh, Vion, give me big magic or little magic. This is big magic. All right, give me a big magic roll. Great. So this is eight plus roll, uh, nine to turn on. Nine to turn on. Um. That will actually turn it on. I rolled a one. Okay, great. Uh, hey. And then uh, six plus roll. Uh, another one, seven. Okay. Danger sense and level ability for reactions, defending against attacks, for sudden dangers, and for awareness tests to notice those dangers. Um, so if you're getting. If your danger sense is level level is lower than the associated ability, you get a plus one bonus to test. So this gives you level five danger sense, which is higher than your awareness, certainly. Yeah, level six, right? Oh, right, right. I yeah. forgot you raised your big magic. Sorry, my bad. Um, yeah, level six danger sense, which is double your awareness. So you're... Nothing. You're you feel great. good right now. Great, great, great. I'll just keep that on. This and, is usually uh, the part in the movie where you're like something's about to happen. So. <laughs> um. Yeah, Benny. You. Um, I just you know, help wherever. Just this is kind of I'm sure a lot for him too. Yeah. <laughs> he just worked so hard to pack it, so I'll just I'll just give extra hands. Possibly a lot for you too, as you know mm -hmm. he digs in and you see familiar article of clothing, you know, you know, Dino's watch, things that, you know, kind of seemed meaningless in day-to-day -day life, but now probably feel a little charged. Yeah. Um, but eventually he kind of, he's like, hey, I think we got something here. And, and, and he kind of pulls out the camera and he's like, here you go. Uh, and you. it is, you know, we'll say, you know, it's kind of a, it's a nice Pentax or something like that, you know. It's a kind of a pros camera, um, and uh, he, he, it, it's it's a newer model. It's you know, it's got viewfinder. It's you know, computerized that kind of stuff. Um, I first want to make sure that the card USB card is still or US what's SD card? The SD card is still inside. That's what I'm trying to ask. <laughs> and you you open it up, and uh, yeah, there is an SD card okay. in there. I'll snap it shut then. I just wanted to make sure. And he's um, like, you, yeah, you you just keep that. Are you sure? It's kind of nice. Oh, absolutely. I've, I've never really had a, a, you know, a good eye for photography. I just, I use my phone here. It does all the auto focusing for you and stuff. Um, and uh, it's more than enough for me. I, I, I would feel nervous having that fancy camera around. Um, again, very sorry for this, all of it, but was, what, what else did he have on him? Did I just had his wallet. Uh, his pass for uh, the Chatterbox building, the you know security pass. Um, so, does he have any sort of, I don't know, a notebook or? Uh, not that I know of. I just I think he was looking for something, and I just want to finish that for him because I think he was doing it to look out for me. Uh, yeah, that's Dino. You know, always. 
always watching out for people. I like to think I taught him that, but uh, I bet you did. He was a good kid sometimes. He Not had always. his moments. He had yeah. his moments. Not always, but yeah, sometimes. And uh, well, is there anything else I can do for you? Uh, and, and he kind of takes out a card and he's like, this is my number. I bet he I'm pulls out her old, yeah, her old, uh, <laughs> we said multiple times, just leftover from college cards uh. that he's got. She'll pull it out and she'll scribble her phone number on the back too and be like, you too. Thanks, and uh, good luck. I hope you find what he was looking for. Me too. Um, do you w want company? It uh, sucks to be alone. Through this I think kind I'm of thing. almost done here, and I'm going to head back to my hotel up in Avalon. How much longer are you in Port Ruby for? Oh, just another day. Uh, okay. I've already been here a lot longer than I probably should have been. I burned a lot of vacation days for this. Well, we're around, so if you yeah. need anything in the next 24 hours. Oh, I appreciate that. And honestly, I've only known you for a few minutes, but I don't know. I kind of feel a little bit of a family bond thing here. Are you a hugger? I was just about to ask you the same thing. <laughs> And she's yeah. gonna, she's gonna give him a big hug. And, and and he gives you a hug. Thanks for watching out for my brother. I don't think she can say. I don't think she can say anything to that. And uh, feel free to take pizza with you if you want. Yeah, she'll she'll grab a slice to appease the the offering. <laughs> to a pizza, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and uh, he lets you out. And uh, so you head back down to the street. What are you doing, Rick? I'm not doing anything. All right, so My awareness just, just got down. better. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, everything seems pretty normal. Oh, thank God. Uh, okay, let's check those pictures. Yes. Yeah. yes. Immediately find a park bench, sit down, and I want to start flipping through what the last things that Dino took photos of are. Okay. Um you all, I'll say, gather around to, you know, see what's on this view screen. And um, you see um, there are a lot of, he took a lot of shots. Yeah. Um, you see a lot of shots of a back of a, uh, the back of a tall man wearing a black trench coat. You exactly see the guy who was asking about me. I knew it. You see shots of this man from the back um, walking down the hallway of the Chatterbox building. You see shots of him getting onto a subway. You see shots of him getting off of the subway. And, and as you look, you can see that these shots, they're actually spread out over a couple of days as if maybe Dino was watching him for a few days. Dino. Um, and then you see one shot of this guy. He is standing outside of a building, which looks like kind of a rundown bar, pub, something like that. It is called the Friendly Fiddler. Um, and, uh, you can see it is the one and only shot of this man from the front. If I had to cast him, I would say he is played by Ricky Yoon. Uh, y U N E. Um, uh, Thank you. I missed the name. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Rick Yoon. Um, he is he's a villain in James Bond movies in Fast and the Furious, the first episode, uh, first chapter. Could you say um, the name of yeah, the location? Who's that again? Sorry, the uh, the friendly fiddler. Friendly fiddler. I think Benny's shaking just like a little bit, yeah. but like, I don't know if she knows what emotion is causing that right now. <laughs> there are a lot of them. Uh, how? Or, yeah. Go ahead. I'm just gonna say, all right, we got a lead. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's head to the friendly fiddler and uh, just kind of look around. Yeah, and uh, you know that'll be easy. Ula's, you know, 
checks the internet. I'm, I'm just, I'm not even going to make it. You yeah, know, this is know public address, information. Yeah. 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 Um, and the Friendly Fiddler is in Ridge Gardens, actually, um, right where that subway stop was. So you are kind of headed right back where you came from. Before we leave, it is at this point, I think, that Cadrax puts a rather tall arm around Benny, who's been looking into the viewfinder, and leans in. You are his coffee squire. It is hard to lose your knight. Yeah. I'm sorry about yours. I'm sorry about yours. But we squires have to stick together now. Let's go avenge some knights, huh? I'll put the top of my head against the side of Benny's head. Yeah, and it. I apply pressure yeah. with the arm that I have around her shoulder. And yes. then we just start floating into the air. <laughs> Shall we? Let's do it. I'll reach an arm back to get the other two and we'll go off. Oh, yes. And yeah, you all again take off into the air of Grinnell Circle, and it is a short flight back to Ridge Gardens. Um, and uh, you land in front of the friendly fiddler. Um, it is a nasty, kind of looking little rundown hole in the wall. Um, and it is directly across the street from the waterfront, uh, where you've been before when you were looking for the spot the Knights of the Blue departed from. Um, there was no reason you should have noticed it then. It's just one of a bunch of kind of junky buildings built you know, uh, along this waterfront and was probably closed during the day when you were there. So um, what do you want to do? This is as far as Benny's train of thought got. So I don't know if she, yeah. <laughs> she's just like, we're here. And then she kind of like stalls out for a second and like turns and looks at her friends like. Oh, how, how do we want to approach this? Do we want to enter the building as patrons and question the individuals or should we approach it more stealthily? They've been coming after our loved ones. They know who we are. But let's show them, shall we? Yes. That sounds like a plan to me. Cadrax is going to start moving for the front door. <laughs> okay. Um, Watch this just as a pop pop popular lunch spot. There's like, yeah. we're, like, we're here for the bad guys. And it's like, they just got lunch here once. Actually. We kicked like, the door into a Panera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They deserve it. Yeah. No. Those bagels. Cadrax. Mm. Really you yes. enter. Everybody else going in with Cadrax? Yes. Yes. Okay. You all walk in. Um, the inside is even dumpier than the outside. Oh, good. Uh, there is, you know, kind of a big bald dude standing behind the bar, you know, sussing out drinks. There are a couple of depressing looking drunks, you know, sitting at the bar. Um, there are, I don't know, about, let's say, you know, eight or ten booths, you know, that line the wall, and there are some people, you know, in a couple of those booths. Um, and Vion, your danger sense starts to tickle. Yeah, that sounds about right. Place uh, in the right place, probably. <laughs> uh... Beyond's gonna go up to the person handing out drinks. Uh, and uh yeah, he just kind of looks at you um and uh just looks look, look looks over the four of you and what can I get you? Uh that's a good question actually. Ulis, what would you like? uh cranberry juice or uh oh yes the juices of cranberries would be perfect 
great. So we're gonna get one cranberry juice. Uh, Doc, what are you what are you feeling? Apple juice for me. Okay, so we got one cranberry juice, one apple juice. Benny, what are you uh in the mood for? Oh, maybe a ginger ale. Do you have like mint sprigs? I feel like Ulas would like that in their cranberry juice. Oh, oh yeah. Do you happen to have any mint sprigs? A place like this looks it's... like it might have like mint sprigs, you know. <laughs> and he does not look amused. It's, um, this ain't a juice bar. Okay. All right. Well, in that case, I'm gonna start with a tonic water, um, and then just a little bit of uh, uh bitters. A nice little mix of, of flavor. And while you're kind of cooking those up, we were wondering if you happen to have seen a particular gentleman we're looking for. And uh, I'd like to show the picture from the camera. And he's uh, like, he doesn't even look at it. And he's like, nope, ain't seen him. Mm. Oh, well, yeah, you wouldn't have because you didn't take a, a second to look at the picture there. You cop? Do I look like a cop? Yeah. That's first of all. Wow. Since that when? <laughs> yeah. Second of all, uh, there are no cops. Um, yeah, we so kind that's of... that has been dissolved. That nice try. Which is uh, actually, they, uh, they can call them public safety, whatever they want, but Department of Investigation. Are you the Department of Investigation? No, man, we're not the Department of Investigation. Mm -hmm. Clearly, this is a fine, upstanding person who has never had interactions with cops or the Department of Investigation, or he'd very clearly know that we aren't. Never had okay, any you... occasion to do such a thing. Make a willpower roll. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Have I taken that, my wait, online course boost. yet? Has that kicked in? Uh, yes, it has kicked use in. That Your willpower is now that four. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Five. There we go. There we go. Yes. And, and, and he doesn't even look up. He just keeps like washing the glass. He's not very charming either. It's fine. Um, can I look around the room? Like, what's here? What is? Is there like? Are there back? Is there doors to like other rooms? Like, is there like bath doors to bathrooms? Like, or is this just a room with no outlets? It's you know, from the entrance. There is, you know, if you were facing in from the entrance, like on the right side, there are all the booths along one wall. And then on the left side, the bar takes up most of that wall. But like, you know, right at the entrance, there are like a couple of like tables kind of set up like right, right before the bar starts. Um, make an investigation roll if you want more than that. That's just what's obvious. Okay, that's as high as I can roll. Nine. There are, look like there are a couple of doors towards the back. Um, if you had to guess, you know, bathroom, closet, you know, fire exit. I'm sorry. I got to play a uh, quality against myself. I know that we're doing this the smart oh, way, but please, please. Um, just because of the nature of this investigation, um, I can get angry. I'm going to phase and I'm going to put my hand right towards the gentleman's heart um, and hold my hand there. Okay, listen, we're actually investigating a murder. We're not the cops. We're looking at something very separate. And I think at this point, the voice has fully come back. Uh, we're looking at someone who's causing heart attacks. And uh, I'm willing to create a couple more myself in order for <laughs> us to get to an answer. So either you tell us or I'm going to kill you right here. And looking around, I don't think anyone's going to hop to uh, your defense because... I do this, the place will be swarming with cops. And no one wants to answer any of these questions because it's going to get real messy. So uh, why don't we keep this all completely under the table and you just take a glance at that camera and you tell us where that gentleman is or if you know anything. And if his life is worth yours, you keep your secrets. But I have a feeling it's not. I have a feeling you don't want to protect this man. So go ahead, take a look at the camera and you tell us right now, who is that? Give me a willpower roll. Right. Glad that I boosted that. Don't like bullies. Okay, here we go. <laughs> mm, I feel that. Seven. Seven. Um, kind of looks at the camera and he's like, maybe I remember something. I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of having trouble uh, with my memory right now, if you know what I mean. <clears throat> uh, Vion retracts his I hand. I pinch his goes, arm as hard as I possibly can. <laughs> the bartender? Yes. You pinch his arm? I pinch, like, the soft part where it hurts really bad. Just <laughs> literally as hard as I possibly can. 
And he's like, ow! Jogging your memory? He's like, no! Okay, okay, all and, right, and yeah. And he kind of looks over, he's like, but uh, one of them fancy bracelets might do it. And he points down at Ulez's arm where they're wearing the, the homemade heart monitor <laughs> bracelets. What? what? I kind of like that one with the chains. That's oh. my look. We took that from Ula or from Vion. I don't know no Vion, but uh, oh. if you gave me Good, that, actually. it could uh, help with my memory. That actually sounds like not a bad idea whatsoever, Ulez. I think that we should uh -oh. give this kind man that a wonderful bracelet um, that also, you know, uh, will help monitor your health uh, for good health. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I, you know what? Absolutely. I think that's probably the best of all options. Oh, and, okay. And, and Benny was like a half a second away from like socking this guy in the jaw. So she's <gasps> just like clenching, like fingers digging into like the edge of the bar to like let this play out. <laughs> That's so much nicer than my first instinct. <laughs> uh, can I really quickly, as we're handing the necklace, or sorry, the bracelet over, can I cast telepathy? Ooh. Big magic or little magic? Uh, this uh, it doesn't matter. For this one, it doesn't really matter. I'll do big magic. Right now, your big it. magic space is occupied by your danger sense. So, Oh, actually, I don't want to do that. Um, no, but it's immediate. I, my little magic still takes the page, so I'm taking off the danger sense, unfortunately. I just want to send out this message to my friends. And I can turn okay. danger um, sense on me, after that. Uh, Magic roll, see if you can turn on telepathy. Is it eight plus roll? Ten to turn it on? Yeah, that'll do it. Great. Um, and I'm just going to telepath. I mean, I'll, and then I'll do They're all willing subjects, so you can yeah. just do, say whatever you want. So I'm just going to say, like, re remind everybody, this actually monitors people's vital signs. He's about to give us information, and if his vital signs go down, we'll know exactly when that happens. So, yeah, you know what? From us to you, uh, from our family to you, absolutely. And I'm sorry that it got a little heated. I'm just, I'm under the gun. I'm a, I'm a private investigator. And, you know, if I don't get this stuff investigated in time, if we don't get this stuff investigated in time, it starts to cut into our cash. And I, <laughs> I like money. You and I feel like that might be something you and I have in common. And he, he's kind of looking at the bracelet. He's like, I thought it was a watch. Yeah, it is a watch. Uh-huh. It's, yeah, it's, a, it's one of the smart watches. Is it this state of the art? I mean, we just got we actually we got this from a, and I lean in. We got this from a fence. So, <laughs> just made from an the... espresso machine. Oh, you could tell. Huh. That's very unique. Well, and he straps it around his wrist. I guess a deal's a deal. Uh, I seen that woman hanging out with that guy you're looking for. That woman. Uh, I'm going to turn and see which woman he's talking about. That one that just walked out the fire exit there. Oh, and you I'm see running. The, I'm following the back door like kind of starting to close. I'm following. Okay, great. You are uh, following. Is yes. everyone following? or I will in a you second. Can do whatever you want. I, I do want to shake the gentleman's hand. <laughs> and uh, he uh, extends his hand. He's like, pleasure doing business with you. Come back Absolutely. anytime. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And hey, I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I wasn't gonna do anything, just so you know. It's, and it's completely like, abandoned. Yeah, I was real scared. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah, yeah, man, I'm not that great. I just did theater, you know what I mean? So, all right. Um, <laughs> and then I'm gonna turn and then head out as well. Kajak, Ulez, you going with? Oh yeah. Flying. Okay. It's faster. Benny, mm -hmm. you yeah. push open the fire exit, um, and uh, you enter into an alley behind the building. Um, that kind of leads to the street on one side, and then you turn up the other side as the, the, the rest of you kind of enter, now standing behind Benny in the alley. Um, and uh, I look up. If I don't see a person uh, with us, I look up. Uh, well, you, you look up, there's nothing up, but down at the end of the alley oh. in the shadow, you see some figures moving. And... Uh, I'm move. I'm moving. I'm walking that way. <laughs> yeah, and as you walk that way, those figures come into relief, and uh, you see um, four people uh, dressed all in kind of matching black overcoats. Um, one of them is uh, this guy, you know, played by Rick Yoon, who you were looking for. One of them is uh, played by Saoirse Ronan, the person that you saw in your vision, Vion. One of them is, uh, say, played by Walt Goggins. And uh, one of them is played by uh, Chiwetel Ejiofor. And um, the four of them kind of just 
stand there as you run towards them. I am turning into lava. And as you start turning into lava, um, from a nearby rooftop, a fifth figure jumps and lands right in front of you. He looks up, and you see the face of Sonny. Uh. And he gets to his feet, and he says, Vion, Ulez, Benny, Cadrax, meet Howler, Rory, Pearson, and Shrillick, the Knights of the Red. And on that, God. we're going to pull this one to an end. We will see you next week. Sonny. Motherfucker. <laughs> Sonny of a bitch. <laughs> uh huh. Woo! Mm. Uh, oh, um, I'm gonna fucking rip his heart out. I swear to God. This, Ooh, no, that's Cadrax's job. This was an incredible one. Oh, oh my God! So many emotions, investigations. It's uh, this. This was great. Oh, this is this. This is why we play the game. Um, I I I, I love y'all and. Uh, um, uh, and, do uh, you? Thank you everybody. Do you like? <laughs> I mean, in my own special way. I am going to send oh. so many bugs. So many Please. bugs. Please. Uh. So, real quick, go around the table and uh, tell oh the good God. people where they can find you, uh, starting with Sam Delev. When Sam you got. <laughs> That's it. Okay. You can find Sam on uh, fine uh, programming everywhere. Um, Be Zelda. Uh, you're, oh yeah. yes as always i'm your busy non-binary b you can find me on twitter is at b underscore zelda podcaster streamer writer um i'm a hobby sleeper i basically sleep for a living it's quite nice not actually but i'm very good at it <laughs> omar najam when you do what you love you know b <laughs> <laughs> uh hey everyone i am omar najam you can find me at omar najam on twitter um, there, I posted a thing about the Tegan and Sarah Foundation. Uh, they're doing a campaign right now. So if you donate, uh, let me know. I'm going to match up to 200. Uh, there's a bunch of really cool prizes you can get, like signed copies of their books and stuff like that. Um, but also, it's just an incredible foundation. So uh, if you end up participating, let me know. Respond to that tweet. I'll retweet it after this uh, so you can yeah, see it. We'll retweet that from the PowerPlay account. Too. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And I, I don't I don't have a lot of money, but I, I'll definitely uh, match up to 200. Um, also, I just want to say I'm wearing our friend uh, So Much Geeks uh, sweatshirt right now, uh, which is this really cool design. Ooh. Uh, so cool. check it out. Uh, so Much Geek, S E W, uh, Much Geek. And I also want to say really quickly, this is not like anything that has to do with like anything that we follow or whatever, but my youngest sibling, they just won the channel Fireball 1K uh, for MTG. So I just wanted Aww. to give a shout out to them. So good job, Imran. I'm very proud Ooh, of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's it. Victory. By the way, love the shirt. Looks like something Ulez would love. <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and, uh, you know, I love everybody, but our MVP for tonight, Caitlin Bruder. Thank you. Um, hi, I'm Kayla Bruder. Uh, I cried real tears tonight. That was <laughs> very fun for me. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at KKAMABR. Check us out on Rule of Lore this Wednesday for the finale of our Cyberpunk three shot twitch.tv slash rule of lore over at uh, 6 p.m. Pacific. We are all desert goblins. Not literally, but it feels that way. We're a bunch <laughs> of shitheads. It's great. Um, come check that out. That's all I got. And uh I'm Rick Budd. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram at rbud913, or you can uh, follow the show at PowerPlayRPG. I will be back here uh, next week uh, with these four just friggin' titans of role-playing um, for the season four finale oh of PowerPlay, um, in which the team will have their little showdown with the Knights of the Red. When I say little, I mean probably not little. So... Uh, please join us next week as we close down another season of Power Play, and uh, it, it should be pretty great. And on that, the theater goes dark, oh and we are on Bray Island in the present day. We're at the Astro Listening Post, actually. Um, and Dr. Mosley is kind of just making rounds around uh, the, the room where all the listeners work, seeing what they're all up to. Everything is pretty calm. And uh, suddenly, a soft digital chime kind of sounds through the PA system. Boop. And uh, an electric voice says, craft detected. 
and uh, nobody really seems terribly interested. Um, and they just keep going about their business. And Mosley kind of looks to the front of the room where there's this huge billboard size screen mounted on the wall. And um, the display on it changes to a graphic representation of uh, the whole galaxy. And a flashing light places this craft at the edge of the Milky Way. And Mosley walks to the front of the room where Dr. Sutton is working at his computer station. And Mosley says, uh, what do we got? And Sutton says, don't know yet. Mosley says, just the one? Sutton's like, yeah, I'm trying to. But he's suddenly cut off as a chime sounds again. And the electric voice says, craft detected. And they both look up at the screen. And now there are two yellow dots. And Sutton says, I guess there are two. And then the chime sounds again and again and again and start sounding so many times so quickly it just begins to sound like a broken unbroken steady tone and they watch as the two dots become 10 the 10 become 100 and soon there are just too many to count at this point all of the listeners have stood up at their stations and they are watching the screen everybody mesmerized perplexed mosley says what do we have on him? And Sutton looks at the computer and says, nothing yet, but the satellites are picking up engines vibrating at 50,000 cycles per second. Mosley grabs a table off the desk and opens up a chart and starts scanning down the chart. And he finally stops 50,000 cycles per second. And Sutton says, yeah, why? Is that good or bad? And Mosley says, I'm not sure. What do we know about the alpha combine? And on that, we cut to black. Thanks for playing with us.